Duran Tobago, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the grandstand. Welcome to the PNM's 50th anniversary, our 50th convention, and our 60th year, our 60th anniversary. We are celebrating our golden, golden convention. Yep. I am Simon Lee Norberg. I am joined by Petal Benoit. I am also joined by Ronald Huggins. We are walking you through the activities today. So many big things to talk about. The sun is out. The sun is shining on the PNM today. And the energy is high. The place is hot with energy. Energy. Everybody is out. All our constituencies are here. Happy to be here supporting the party. Guys, let's talk about what's going on today. Oh my God. <laughs> the energy is just it is so crazy. Yes. Here today. And there's something about the vibrancy of red in oh one my place. God. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yes. It is, it is. It's definitely up. I mean, it was amazing. There's a 50 at us, you know, it's grand. Yes, All it was right. amazing. Golden. To see all the constituencies and the motorcades coming into the savannah. Those who yeah. went to vote, register, settle. So if, if you all were here to your left or your right, you'll see your constituencies gathered. I mean, it's total energy, total vibe. 50. Yes, yes, yes. And from as early as 7 a.m., people yes, started Erica, coming right. to yep. the space. 7 a.m. Because, of course, the anxiety and wanting to vote. Right, to correct. Select the executive of the People's the National, National Movement, Movement for this term. Yeah. And I think our members have taken this very, very seriously. Very because serious. they have come out in their numbers to vote for their candidate of choice. And I just can't. Yeah express how ecstatic yeah. I am to see so many the love of the People's National and Movement. The next thing, Simon, it's been so long since we've gathered yes. like this. You, know, you can so definitely feel it. Less energy. than you yeah. can. Yeah, and yeah. That's, that's what so long I didn't see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that energy is alive. So, so instead of giving me a wine today, we gave each other hugs and bounces. Oh, and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It, was, it was really, really I have awesome. seen the lines at the back. People have been queued up from jump. You I know mean, they still have lines coming in. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I've been blown away by, by as you were saying, Petal, the desire of, of people to vote. I mean, yeah. and this is obvious coming off of two very successful Correct. days of, of course, voting at, at the constituency yes, levels yes, as well. Yes, yes, Regardless yes. of the weather, and we might say that this three-day voting process, we are the first, you know, PNM is always the party. Oh, of course, of course, we, of course. Vanguard. we expanded the democracy yes, here. Correct. More opportunities to vote. Correct. I mean, boy, it's been amazing. Yes, the yes, response yes. has been yeah. totally amazing. Yeah. I'm really excited to see to see the numbers that are coming out from Correct. today. The yeah. numbers were great over the weekend, as yes. you're saying, Ronald. Um, especially despite the numbers, despite the, the weather, the weather. Days, yeah. Yeah. people came out in numbers, and they, I have been seeing, I mean, cars parked up, people parked up. Coolers are out. People talking about the voting. Yes. People talking about the convention. Yep, yep. Energy is crazy here today. Yes, and, and, I, and I think people really prepared to come out today because when you go back in preparation for this 50th anniversary or this 50th convention, party groups would have had their elections. Correct. To yeah. the constituency, to, yeah. Yeah. AGMs and their conferences. And it all culminates today at the People's National Movement 50th Correct. Golden yeah. Convention. Yeah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, we just had a, a segment of the official part of the convention where constituencies were reading the reports yes. into the convention, um, chaired by the chairman, of course. And now we have some entertainment. And, and we have lots of women in the background. But we have a lot of surprises. There's 50. Yeah. We, can't we can't tell everybody. We have lots in store. Big things coming. Big Lots in store. So this stay is. tuned in and locked on to this frequency. Very correct. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, but we are also, so we should talk about where we are. We are live on TTT. We are live on TV6. We are across social media. We are on I-95. 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 Talk I City. Point, yeah. Listen. Wherever you are, you can log on, you can tune in, you can turn on Correct. to see what is happening in the big yard, to see the energy around the PNM's 50th convention. Um, anybody who wants supporters of the PNM, if you can't get here, tune in, listen. The big things coming. They have big men in the business. They have big people in the business. There's so many things happening today. And apart from the entertainment, there's a segment, there's a video presentation for the PNM story. Yes. A journey through the 50 years. Yes. You don't yeah. want to miss it. And what a story, eh? What, what a, a story. story. What a story. So wait now. 
Dr. Bego in the house, eh? Of course, Bego is in the house. Yeah, and Bego right. is well represented, well represented at the Queen's Rock Savannah today. So you all came across yesterday? Or you all came this Actually, morning? different persons came at different times. Right. Some even came on Friday, some came yesterday, some came right. this morning. <laughs> but I must say, Tobago is well represented. And like this convention, mm. the Tobago Council of the People's National Movement right. had its Tobago Council's yeah. convention on Thursday. Yes, yes. Right. yes. yes. and yes. it pleased my heart to see so many people coming out, even in terms of voting on the 26th and the 27th. Right. Yeah. The number of persons coming to vote. Yeah. yeah. When I witness even our members you know we are in opposition. The People's National Movement is in opposition in the Tobago of Assembly. Yeah, yeah. And to see the number of persons coming out, I was overwhelmed. I was really, really pleased. And it shows that the uptake of the PNM has begun to come right. around again. Resurgence. Yes, resurgence. Party is energized. Yes. Party is energized. Alive and well in Tobago. Of course, we are resilient. Yeah. Check, check our national, let's check our political emblem, the Balazay. Correct. The Balazay, you could cut it down, you could uproot it, you could burn it. But once the rain comes again, the vibrancy Correct. of our symbol, yeah. that is so through through. You should be on stage. So our party, okay. oh my God. <laughs> No, 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 there's no other. There's yeah. no other like the People's National. None, none, none. Oh, and, and for those out there, we also have, at this 50th convention, a kid zone. Yes. Right. The castle, Santa, the works for the kids, because we're in the Christmas spirit, and this right, is the yeah. 50th, you know? We also have a scoreboard, you know? We can get results on yes. the game, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we have a scoreboard too, so we thought yes, of everything. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and we have everything in store for everyone, every everyone. age group, from old to young. Uh, so come out, there is still time to come to the Savannah. Yep, yes. moms and dads bring yes. your song, make a day of it. This is a family, this is a family institution. Correct. We yes. know the PNM is inculcated in families, so please bring your children down, have a time, be a part of the energy here. Yes, and when you look around, you see lots of things to eat, to drink, so don't... We have a whole food court outside. Yes! Correct. Tobago so represented. We have a whole yes, food court. Yes. Tobago represented well in the food court as yes. well. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yes, plenty energy. Plenty, yeah. plenty, plenty So energy. guys, I can tell you, I mean, Tobago is here. I can tell you from the Martin Central, there has been a lot of energy. The, the, the constituency executive has been right. buzzing to get here, of course, we were very energetic over the weekend, yes. looking forward to the election results. Right. We have to go, but we are going, are we going to the stage now? I think we're going to throw to the stage shortly. So let's go yes. to the stage. All right. So 
And we drinking everything you bring. Pasito, pasito. On behalf of the Los Alumnos, they San Juan for our group. We like to wish the people's national movement a very Merry Christmas and a bright and prosperous New Year. Hope to have you all a hundred years short. Merry Christmas from Los Alumnos, they San Juan.
Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I don't know if you all can hear the rhythm section jamming in the yes. background. We just, we just heard Los Alumnos. The San Juan. The, the San Juan having a time for us today. Yeah. So guys, Ronald, we were talking off air. Yeah. This is my first, this is my first <laughs> convention <laughs> on air. Can I tell us your first convention yes, on first air? Yes, it's my first convention. But, but Ronald is an old yeah. hat this thing. He's a veteran. Right. <laughs> veteran is here. Yeah. What we want to know is, when was your first convention? Oh, I think the first, I think 2016 was the first convention I came to. Right. The first time I came to a convention in, in 2016. Where about yours? Oh, my I'm sure you all beaten me. I yeah, know. yeah. I'm <laughs> sure. I think my first convention may have been somewhere in 19... Nah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. Better run. Yeah, boy. Listen, I remember the day. Convention in Shagaramas. Shagaramas, that's Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Shagaram was the mecca of the convention. Shagaramas Con Convention Center. Center. Oh, yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was my first, yeah. I can't remember the year, but Shagaramas Convention Center, and you're leaving from St. Joseph with your motorcade and you're heading down, and you're bouncing up they go, and you're bouncing up this one, and you're bouncing All up right. that one, and you reach there. And before we go inside, everyone is outside. Outside, And by the time you reach inside, you're full. Because I pass by Simon, hey, come on, yes, 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 And so you go in, it was, uh, it is always a lot of camaraderie, yeah. a lot of family yeah. vibes, good spirits. I mean, well, that's when the PNM yes. family comes of course, out. Of course, of course, of yeah. course. And today is no different. I remember being at convention as a member of the youth league. That is when I started convention. Woo! So that was like three, four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, and, and our youth league from Tobago, some members would come down. We would come like the Saturday before and we would be so excited to be at convention because trust me, the experience was great. And at that time, it was the delegate system. It was the delegate right. system. So you had a couple of people from each constituency yeah. yes. voting to determine who the executive is. Of but, course. But we've seen that change. Eh? Yes, yes, yes. We've yes, seen yes, that yes, change. Yes. Well, and under, this, uh, under our political leader, we've After seen that yes. change. Yes. That one man, one vote. And that Correct. Every member has the opportunity to vote, vote for the vote. candidates of their Correct. choice. Right. And to select the executive that they think is best to lead the organization. Yeah. And if, ever, if ever a vote counted, was yours. your vote yes. counted, go to yes. counts now. And, and what we have recognized over time since then, that the democracy has even deepened Correct. with introducing not only one, but in this instance, persons have three days in which Correct. to cast their vote. Yeah. So if you didn't do it on day one, you had the opportunity to do it on day two. And then yeah. here at the convention, if you miss those two days. So it's all about deepening and widening democracy and, and, in and, the people's and national we see the need for it. So I, I don't know <laughs> if we will ever go back to one day of voting. Oh, I don't think, yes. I don't think I don't, we can ever go back. Because when, when we cut off at one, the lines were still, still long, oh, very, very long. Very, very right. long. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I can tell you as a member of the party, I could imagine what it's like. Let's say you live you live in, in some community that's so distant yeah. from from Port of Spain. Yeah. What what we are doing is carrying the process to the membership yes. now. Yep. So every member has the opportunity. The person who can't find themselves from Mayaro, from Maruga from somewhere in Grandi, yes. this is in Tobago, getting here to vote, yes. we are now carrying the process to them. So we really have to thank the executive for making that decision again to deepen and broaden the democratic process in this great party. Correct. Correct. Yes. And let us talk about some more firsts. Some more firsts? Yes. <laughs> Another first to for me? Yes. Um, the first time I voted, yeah. right? I was not a delegate, right? So the first time I voted, it was one man, one vote. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When when you were youth league and going to convention, were you a delegate? No, I wasn't a delegate. Yeah. yeah. So you see? So we all, so we yes. all get in each other. So yeah. 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 first, yeah. first, yeah. first time. But 50th, the celebration, the energy, the atmosphere here, wow. You all can just Relax, you can get some popcorn, drinks, or whatever, because you're in for a full show. 
wonderful entertainment. And of course, we have the feature dress by Dr. Roll, your political leader. And that will be an epic special address because we're talking 50 years. Yes, All right, yes. Golden, years. Golden, golden anniversary. Golden 50 years. And you know, there's an old Vietnamese proverb, when eating fruit, always remember those that plant the trees. Yeah. So when we come to events like this and yes. we see the what's of the PNM, of course. you know, it, it is on their shoulders that, that we are here to build, and we can sit here today. You know, so it's always good to interact with them at the convention. Yes. Because yes. everybody here, the elders, everybody, the young everybody people, is here. Everybody here. And I'm really excited to hear the political leaders address. But over the years, we've all the address by the polit political leader has always been so important. Yeah. Always talking about the things that the party is looking to achieve. Yes. Just the other day, I was seeing a, 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 an article, a story that came out from our third convention in 1958, October 17, 1958, where Dr. Eric Williams then promised Balize House, said that as a party, as an institution, Correct. we need to have a party headquarters. Yeah. And we are now seeing in our in our 66... Um, yeah, as a country on our 50th anniversary, 60th year as a, yes. as a, as a party, we are seeing Palisade House blossoming, oh, this brand new iteration Listen. of Palisade right. House, you know, heralding a brand new future. Even as in this in this convention, you know, we pay homage to the past. We have the PNM story here today, but as a party, we continue to look forward, always planning for the future, investing in youth. You were here as a youth delegate, always, always as a party, invest in youth. But, guys, I am getting the, the, the wind-up to you go back to the, 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 well, you the stage. Yes, you, you can hear you applaud. So let's go back to the stage, everyone. Let's check it out. Y'all, it is 50, 50. This is the PNM's Golden Convention. No one else can say that other than the PNM. So make some noise for this great, great, great. All right, so honestly, it is so exciting people losing their passports. So, Junior, Barack, check us. We have your passport, all right? Good. So, keep it, keep it. <laughs> all right, so here's what's going on. Over the years, one of the things that the PNM has been known for, other than great service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, onward and upward, are the jingles. The crew over here, what is your favorite PNM song of all time? What is your favorite PNM song of all time in front here? What is your favorite PNM song over here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, to give you all the top 10 PNM songs of all time, one of the greatest guitarists in the Caribbean and possibly the world. Please put your hands together for Joy Rivers on Slum, giving you the top 10 PNM songs. Yeah, PNM people make some noise. Yeah. yeah. Hey. 
everybody. This is me and them country. Because we love you, because we care for you and them. This is year after year. Country. We come a long, long, long time to get together, standing side by side. Let me see a wave it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Standing side by side. Hey. I see the face. 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 The as public relations officer for the party yeah. and I am God willing on the announcement going to be your new public relations officer. We have an action packed schedule but let's jump into Janice and your reflections on local government, on leadership in service. Share a little bit with us. Why are you doing this? What's going on? What do you bring to the table? So first of all, Honorable Minister, it is a pleasure to be here at our 50th convention. The vibes, I just want to say, it is phenomenal. I mean, if you're not here, you're really missing out. But my experience so far in local government has been one of the most rewarding in terms of service. Because at the age of 23, um, I would have said, you know what, I think it's time for the voice of the young pe person to be amplified you know, in service, and particularly in Arima, which is where I serve. So, uh, so at 23, you're the youngest youth officer? Yes. Woo! 
the youngest. On a person. On a youngest, youngest youth officer. Wow, how does so, that? So, so not only on a post, but folks, let me give you a little bit. Apart from being youngest, apart from coming into youth officer, Janice, as a serving counselor, also worked in the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government. And therefore, she brings a level of national coordination, many years of service Correct. coming now through the party into the country. And so what we're asking you in Trinidad and Tobago to do, as you pay attention while the World Cup is going on, take a look at what we have on offer. Correct. We're talking about bringing in the national service into political party service into country service. And what we're trying to do is to really stitch things up. We're in local government reform. Janice has been a big part of local government reform. We have just dealt with some of the largest issues in disaster management that we've seen. Did you know that the last time we had rainfall of this type was in 1946? Wow. So you're looking at the images of Mayaru. You're looking at the Manzanilla stretch. You're looking at road rehabilitation. That's natural disaster. Our youth officer is coming forward to say, I am serving at local government level, closest to ground. I'm coming before you as public relations officer to say local government reform is about giving the resources to people and about trying to communicate our vision. Because you have to have a vision at the end of the day. Ronald, what have you seen going on today in the crowd? Tell us about the action that's behind us and what's happening. 20, 20, 20 action, 20, 20 images. This is 50. I want to ask Paris, Honorable Minister, tell us, because I know you're putting a lot of effort and energy, and by us saying Paris is a local government minister, that means we're serious, right? We're very serious. <laughs> that that means we're serious. So, tell us. Can we guarantee this reform that people have been waiting and looking for for so long? So let's talk reform. Let's talk. We are about to launch a serious amount of data. People say, listen, this small issue has been unattended to for years. How about if you had an app where you can report that issue and you can see the progress of that issue and other people can see the progress of that issue. Those are some of the tools that allow us to have open source reporting. That open source reporting is some of the energy we're bringing in public relations. Because Janice, as one of our youngest serving counselors, as our youth representative, Janice brings this kind of energy and ideology into the PNM, and the PNM brings this ideology into government. So, local government is the most important thing for us. I'm in a unique position of having drafted the law and now operationalizing the law. And what we can tell you, looking at what we've just managed over the last few days, watching the rainfall in November alone, landslides in the hills, floods on the, on the, in the Nariva Swamp, Ottawa, number of other areas, bamboo, etc. Natural disasters are here because of climatic change and therefore stepping up the local government delivery is critically important. Tell me about your experience with your constituencies arriving here. Yeah. I have hundreds from San Fernando oh. West here. That entire <laughs> section is all San Fernando West. Just want to let you know. That they, section, well, this this whole section here is St. Joseph. This whole section. This and whole section is St. Joseph. And folks, if you're looking for the people from Arima, they're wearing black t-shirts, as Arima just decided they had to stand out. So we're seeing electricity in the crowd. Yeah. We're seeing energy. I want to thank God for the good weather today because it has not been an easy experience over the last few days. The crowds are thick. At this time of the day is where the crowds really start to descend. Remember, we had voting this morning. Correct. We had voting over and two other days. And the lines were very long, so you could tell that democracy is alive and well in the PNM, and people Correct. are excited to choose their leaders. So this is why you're seeing lines snaking around the Queen's Park Savannah, and we would have had two days of voting prior to Convention Day. Now, and, and the wonderful part about it is you're not just seeing experienced persons line, lining up to vote. There is a whole host of young people Correct. who's excited and who's ready and is... You, you know what hit me today on the crowd? how many children we have here, yes. oh, well. how many young people we have. I mean, you kind of think that politics is not about, about young people. But what you're seeing right now is a lot of youth involvement. Janice, that's all for you. Behind us at stage, I want you to pay attention. We're going to flip across to the stage shortly. 
and you're going to see some of the action come in. The energy is ripping up the place right now. The crowd is expanding as we speak, getting a little bit cooler. Here's where the action comes and along. And furthermore, if you're at home and you're looking on, we invite you to come down and celebrate with us at the Queen's Park Savannah. <laughs> celebrate with us. So, we over stage side, we'll catch in just a little bit. We are making a statement today. The sea of red will drown them, just like in the Bible. Boy, boy. So we come in. In 2010, they run away with victory. But the enemy dead, they just get we more angry. With a new constitution, we energize the body. No stopping, we come in, we come in. Big 50, everyone. We're at the Queen's Park Savannah. We are live Hi. here with a massive crowd. With me is Ronald Huggins. With me is Janice Scott. Mm -hmm. Big shout out from us. So, Ronald, let's talk 50. Janice, let's talk 50. Let me let the young people tell you <laughs> that what 50 means to the PNM. Ronald. Well, 50, and this is our 50th convention. That means we have 50, 50 of these prior to this one. First one was 1956. So we stand on the shoulders of those gentlemen who would have laid the foundation for us to sit here and even be a part of a 50th convention. So here's what it is. We have elections afoot. The post of political leader, mm -hmm. the post of all of the officers of the movement. Some of us are unopposed. Janice and I were just lucky enough to be there and foster. Thank you, everybody, for not and running against Minister us. Minister Camille. Min oh, well, Camille is not even <laughs> in, in the race, right? Mm -hmm. But what this means is our membership has come together 50 times in general convention. Correct. And on these conventions, we sometimes have our massive elections afoot. So the political leaders post is for four years. Every other office of the party is for two years. And today we have had a significant amount of positioning 
We've had voting live today and we've had voting on two days yep. before. We are now at the point of the crowd assembling and you can hear us behind. The music is beginning to get a little softer. Mm -hmm. Stage side is going to come alive. Here is where you see the interaction of the results of voting coming to the fore. And what we celebrate today is the democracy of the PNM alive in a um, one man, one vote, one woman, one vote equation. And that's big news for us here. Right. This is no hidden show. This is democracy at work and in your face. So, and the, also the expansion of our democracy. Because we were, we were talking the delegate system a couple of years ago until Dr. Oli did the one man, one vote. So it's also expansion in that sense and in the sense of the amount of time allotted for voting. So we get any signals from our crew because we're live. So just to let you know, we're going to go stage side now to do the introduction of events that are coming. We're going to show you what the crowd is seeing. There's a massive crowd here today. So let's turn over to stage side. We'll be back with you to give you the little snippets of why the PNM and why the PNM in government and what this convention means to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Because everybody's paying attention. Let's head out. Stay tuned. But I would like to encourage the formation of a political party on a different basis. Okay. First, 1955 by D. Wilton Rogers and John Donaldson through the People's Education and Movement and Teachers Educational and Cultural Association. 10,000 people attended the meeting. I stand before you tonight the representative of a principle, a cause and a defeat. The principle is the principle of intellectual freedom. The cause is the cause of the West Indian people. The defeat is the defeat of the policy of appointing local men to high office. I was born here, and here I stay, with the people of Trinidad and Tobago, who educated me free of charge for nine years at Queen's Royal College and for five years at Oxford, who have made me whatever I am and who have been or might be at any time the victims of the very pressures which I have been fighting against for 12 years. I have decided I am going to let down my bucket where I am now, right here, with you in the British West Indies. Eric Williams had launched his new approach to politics in January of the following year in 1956. We are not an ordinary party in the accepted narrow sense of the word. We are rather a rally, a convention of all and for all, a mobilization of the forces in the community with emphasis on united action by all the people. It started with a dream, cautiously harbored in the hearts and minds of our parents and grandparents, sugar, oil, and port workers alike. A dream that was thought unattainable by citizens from the humblest means to the most resourced in society. Wherever he went, they had tremendous crowds of people in every part of the country. And when I got the opportunity to preside over this meeting in at the Mova market, I went and I chatted with him and we made friends and we agreed to go to the seminar in San Fernando at the Naparima Old Boys. Ibit Musahib, Dr. Winston Mahabia, Gerald Montano, they were all participants in that um, seminar. At the end of the meeting, I jokingly said that if we could unite in such a way culturally, why we can't unite politically? And then we went to dinner. And there we developed the talk and we said to William, why don't you come in? He said he will think about it. And he thought about it. And two weeks later, he said to me, you remember the discussion we have, we can talk. But I would like to encourage the formation of a political party on a different basis. I would like to go to the grassroots and meet the people first and then think about a political party after. 
a mass meeting was organized on June 21, 1955 by D. Wilton Rogers and John Donaldson through the People's Education and Movement and Teachers Educational and Cultural Association. 10,000 people attended the meeting. I stand before you tonight the representative of a principle, a cause and a defeat. The principle is the principle of intellectual freedom. The cause is the cause of the West Indian people. The defeat is the defeat of the policy of appointing local men to high office. I was born here and here I stay with the people of Trinidad and Tobago who educated me free of charge for nine years at Queen's Royal College and for five years at Oxford, who have made me whatever I am and who have been or might be at any time the victims of the very pressures which I have been fighting against for 12 years. I have decided I am going to let down my bucket where I am now, right here, with you in the British West Indies. Eric Williams had launched his new approach to politics in January of the following year in 1956. Woodford Square had become known as the University of Woodford Square and Dr. Eric Williams launched the PNM. Instead of the usual promises to only improve infrastructure such as standpipes and roads in local areas, this party preached a national vision known as the People's Charter. This included conventions where Dr. Williams outlined plans and national policy. Williams, using this structure, outlined the vision for social development across the country. He had a clearly articulated vision and was backed by a diverse political base. And in eight months after its formation, the day before his 45th birthday, the PNM won the 1956 election. In the PNM conventions that followed, Williams formed and shaped the country using five-year plans. In a PNM convention, just like this one, the independence of this nation was proposed for the first time. Dr. Williams laid the historic formal resolution of independence before the members of the PNM. In the convention document of 1962, Williams proposed this resolution. Be it therefore resolved, that Trinidad and Tobago reject unequivocally any participation in federation of the Eastern Caribbean and proposed forthwith to national independence. This historic resolution was voted on and adopted first by the People's National Movement. Four months later, Williams led a team to Marlborough House in London to a conference on the independence of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Secretary, gentlemen, it's a great honor for us, the members of the Trinidad and Tobago delegation, to be here this morning in this historic building, taking our place long overdue in the independence queue. The independent nation of which we dream is like to a grain of mustard seed, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. It is that same burning ambition that keeps this party rallied and mobilized for the common good every day for 66 years and counting. The PNM has candidates in every single seat in every single election since inception. This party has served this country in government for a combined 50 years out of 66 in total and won 12 out of a total of 16 general elections, receiving a total of 3,745,542 votes in general elections. The PNM is a strong institution with a disciplined internal structure. This is where the heart of the PNM resides. Rallies, public meetings, walkabouts, cottage meetings, and national meetings that determine the destiny of Trinidad and Tobago. It is in conventions like this 
that together we map the direction and vision for the country. So tonight, my dear friends, permit me to begin by reading something for you. By the year 2020, Trinidad and Tobago will be a united, resilient, productive, innovative, and prosperous nation with a disciplined, caring, fun-loving society comprising healthy, happy, and well-educated people and built on the enduring attributes of self-reliance, respect, tolerance, equity, and integrity in which every citizen has equal opportunity to achieve his or her fullest potential. All citizens enjoy a high quality of life where quality health care is available to all and where safe, peaceful, environmentally friendly communities are maintained. All citizens are assured of a sound, relevant education system tailored to meet the human resource needs of a modern, progressive, technologically advancing nation. Optimum use is made of all the resources of the nation. The family as the foundation of the society contributes to its growth, development, and stability. There is respect for the rule of law and human rights and the promotion of the principles of democracy, the diversity and creativity of all its people are valued and nurtured. You know what that is? That is the vision of the PNM. It is in putting together these policies for the common cause that the PNM has visioned out. We have always been the party of vision. Great is the PNM because we have always been the party of Dr. Eric Eustace Williams. Great is the PNM because we are the party of George Chambers. Great is the PNM because we are the party that produced Patrick Manning. Great is the PNM because we have always been the party with love for country. Great is the PNM because we will build that new society. Great is the PNM because we will always stand up for and defend Trinidad and Tobago. And on that day, when we would have realized elements of our dream of a new society, we will say with one voice, Great is the PNM! Great is the PNM! Great is the PNM! And we shall prevail! The institution of the PNM holds a venerable record of planning onwards and upwards. The Queen's Park Savannah Super Blue is on stage. Hello. We love it and the vibes. The crowd Hello. went wild. Speech of Eric Williams, who sat at Kent House, where the ministry is located, in 1956. They went even wilder with the voice of Patrick Manning. They then erupted with the voice of Keith Rowley, because we've been doing this for 50 years. years. The party has been around for 67 years. 67 years. We started in 1955 and our democracy is alive. We're gonna head to stage very shortly as we tee up the presentations coming ahead. But let's just soak in the vibes of Plenty of vibes, blue. plenty vibes. The vibes is up and up and up and up. It's almost so, a, a big PNM fat. It's a big PNM vibe, big celebration. So we have Super Blue in the back. We'll now throw, I know y'all want, want some of this. So let's see if you see it, side. Awesome. 40 
<laughs> this is a celebration for life. <laughs> five zero, five zero. Put up your hands on fifty. Say yeah. Somebody scream. DJ, big it out. Yeah. 
Connected it with light and shining A super glory Everyone with a flag and a smile on their face Lord, he died in a very good and blessed Phenomenal The lovely atmosphere And the Lord is our children Who shall be there? I had the party start, fantastic Friday. Sincerely from your heart, thank God it's Friday. I'm here to hear you say I love you, fantastic Friday. And why some of the blue, thank God it's Friday. Friday, match up the place, Friday. From the place, Friday, make like a back, Friday. And don't you stop, don't you stop, don't you stop, don't you stop. I suggest we thank the Father in heaven for every soccer that we do to inform, educate, entertain, and feel culturally. We preach and we teach, oh, like the sunrise. Please open your eyes. Get down, oh, how oh, the tunes go. La la la. I like the party stop, fantastic Friday. Sincerely from your heart. This Friday, I'm just here to say I love you. Fantastic Friday, if I somehow the blue. crowd dancing movement structures we've just announced mrs rowley she has joined us she is part and parcel as our first lazy first lady we have her her presence warmly accepted by this crowd lots of love on the ground here at queen's park savannah my younger sister in politics renuka sagram since suklal her energy and vibrance is now on stage. And ladies and gentlemen, we're celebrating 50 years of conventions. It's our voting day. Coming out of this whole arrangement comes our democracy in the PNM. From our leadership in service comes the leadership that takes us through the next few years. We are the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. 
and therefore we ask the citizens to have a look at our democracy and our internal systems at work. You won't see this in other political parties. We make it available on show for the entire world to see. Our democracy is live and well. Today we're going to hear from our program of events. One of our big highlights, of course, today coming up into the steps was our historical background. We're going to get to the political leader's speech. You're going to hear our policy. You're going to hear our events. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to head back to stage. Feel the energy. Let's run. Thank you for in 2020 when I offered myself for service. You opened your arms and your hearts to me. This is the only platform where every creed and race finds an equal place. And that deserves a round of applause. So, in my true fashion, people of the PNM, the Red Army, and I need to hear, yeah? The Red Army, let me hear you roar! We can do better than that. The Red Army, every creed and race that finds an equal place here tonight, let me hear you roar! My brothers and sisters, allow me the opportunity as I begin my presentation today, allow me the opportunity to recognize our political leader, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley. Political leader, I thank you for the opportunity to address our people here tonight. I must also recognize the beautiful, the absolutely beautiful, a woman of class, Mrs. Sharon Rowley. Let us give Mrs. Rowley a round of applause. Allow me to recognize the man who will return Tobago, our beautiful sister island Tobago, to the falls of the PNM, my political brother, Mr. Ansel Dennis. Allow me to recognize all the organizers and the team who put together this mammoth, this beautiful convention. Trust me, they're frightened. They're watching we now and they're nervous and they're frightened. So we need to give our, our organizers a round of applause for bringing us out like this tonight. Very new to politics, I want to recognize all the seniors of our party. Those members who have blazed the trail for us, the younger ones, those members who have ensured that today we have a PNM, we have a strong PNM, we have an institution called the PNM. Let us recognize all of our seniors here today. Allow me to recognize Mama Joan Newell Williams, the patriarch of our party. Allow me to recognize all members of government, all members of parliament, all members of local government. Come on, let's give them a round of applause. Allow me to recognize all the 41 delegates from throughout the length and breadth of Trinidad and Tobago. Because you see at the PNM, we do afraid. We do afraid and we could put up candidates in 41 constituencies. They cannot boast about that. So that deserves a round of applause. I want to recognize all those who could not be here in person, but are certainly paying attention through the internet or through the television. I want to recognize my husband and my children. For my daughter, you have tests tomorrow. Please leave that cell phone and study. Of course, I want to recognize all members of the media. And finally again, to you, the beautiful people of the People's National Movement, one more time for the road. Let me hear you roar. You see, I love this political hustings and I will tell you why. Because in on this political hustings, I am not constrained by standing orders like in the parliament. On this political hustings, I could say what I want and I could do what I want. But don't worry, political leader, don't worry. Don't worry, we will conduct ourselves in a particular manner. Even though we could do what we want and say what we want. You see, in the PNM, we were not dragged up. We were brought up. 
So even though we could say and do what we want, our political leader don't have to worry about what we will say on this platform. Brothers and sisters, there's so much that I could say about the UNC. There's so much I can say why this country will fall flat in its face if the UNC returns to power. But you see, my mother reminded me that once I mount this platform here today, I have an opportunity to speak to you, to speak with you actually about what the PNM has done and what the PNM brings to this country. Political leader, with your blessings, there are three groups of people that I want to address here tonight. The first group of people that I want to address would be all the losing candidates of the internal elections, because we are in the middle of an internal elections. The second group of people, which your blessings I want, to, I want to address, are all the winning candidates of this internal elections. And last, but by no means least, I want the opportunity to address the young people, the young people of Trinidad and Tobago, because you are our future. Give the young people a round of applause. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I will start by respectfully, by respectfully addressing those candidates who by the end of tonight are not successful in these elections. In a couple of hours, it is no secret, this country will know who will lead the PNM into the future. But before that is announced, I want to address you, all of those candidates who may not have been successful in this election. To every single candidate that contested this election, I say to you, you are a winner, and that is no mama guy. Let us give every single candidate who contested this election, win, lose, or draw, a round of applause. And I say this to you because you have stepped into the light. Some of you have even stepped out of your comfort zones. Some of you have battled and campaigned over the last few weeks. Over the last few weeks, your metal was tested and you survived to the very end. So to those of you who at the end of today may not have succeeded, in my eyes, in the eyes of your party, you're all winners and you deserve a round of applause. I will tell you why I'm addressing the losing candidates. Because you see, I lose St. Augustine. I gave St. Augustine my everything in 2020 a pong pavement. I tried to get people to vote for me, but I lost St. Augustine. But you see, losing allowed me to understand what some of you may feel tonight. But I say to you, and I will share a very personal story with you. That night, when the results came in, as soon as I reached home, the first person I called was my mother. And I expressed to her how very ashamed I was. I started crying. And I expressed to her how very ashamed I was that I lost St. Augustine. And I will share what my mother said to me. The only time you have to feel shame is if you lie and if you thief and if you do something wrong. To the candidates who may not be successful today, you did not lie, you did not thief, and you did not do anything wrong. So you have nothing to feel ashamed. My mother said to me that night, the only time you could stop serving is when you choose to want to stop serving. Serving don't stop with losing an election. So to all of the candidates who are not successful tonight, continue to work in your party groups, continue to give back to the PNM, and I salute you because you are all winners. I will also share another personal story with you. I'm not sure if the Honorable Prime Minister remembers this. But after the election, there was a little ceremony for all of the losing candidates of the PNM in which the Honorable Prime Minister addressed all of us. And I will never forget the words of the Honorable Prime Minister that night. Prime Minister said to all of us that the record, you have nothing to feel ashamed of. And he also said, that the records of the EBC will reflect 
that on the 10th of August 2020, you offered yourself for service. And win, lose, or draw, nobody could take that from you. So again, to those candidates who may not be successful tonight, my simple plea as a young and new person to this political hustings is continue to give your support to the party. At the end of the day, we are one PNM family. I ask you to do me a favor tonight. Brothers and sisters, look to your left. Come on, do it. Look to your left. Look to your right. The person sitting next to you is PNM. The person sitting next to you is your PNM brother and sister. So at the end of this election, here's what we have to do. We have to regroup. We have to reunite like one PNM party because the only enemy I see is Kamala Passad Vicesa and she banned a misfits and unpatriotic politicians. To the winning candidates of the People's National Movement, as I turn to you, I respectfully say to you, to the winning candidates, all we ask of you is that you do not lose focus while you offered yourself to lead us. We ask of you that you do not stop, you do not stop your work on the ground. We ask of you, the winning candidates, that you continue to listen to us. And above all, we ask for your protection. And I will pray for you in the way I know how to pray for you. Jaki Sumiranti Rupa Nasha Nam Shatrogna Ved Prakasha. May the Divine Mother bless each and every winning candidate so that you will continue to do the work of the People's National Movement. And very quickly to the young people of our party. The PNM is the only place that stands for integrity. The PNM is the only place that stands for honesty. The PNM is the only place that offers a different type of governance. Young people of this country, this country was built on PNM policies. Young people of this country, it is Eric Williams and all of our forefathers, PNM forefathers, is who built this country. I call upon you, young people, to offer yourself for service. Do not be afraid of politics. Do not be afraid to step into the light because the PNM will always be the right choice. The PNM is the only choice. As I come to a close, to the young people of Trinidad and Tobago, I, Renuka Sagram Singh, say to you, to the young professionals of Trinidad and Tobago, I, Renuka Sagram Singh, say to you, there's a place for every creed and race in the arms of the People's National Movement. I, Renuka Sagram Singh, say to you, take our hands and let us fight this thing together. So, this is where I will need your assistance. And I'm going to ask a question and the answer is very simple. It is PNM. Young people of Trinidad and Tobago, as we celebrate our golden convention, I will remind you of our story. Who introduced industrialization by invitation? The PNM. Who started the battle against white collar crime and corruption? PNM. Who gave us free education? The PNM. Who gave us a ministry of youth and one for digitization? The PNM. Which party seeks to unite this nation? The PNM. Which party has a station for every creed and race of this nation? The PNM. It is only here you will never find annihilation. It is clear, young people of Trinidad and Tobago, this is where you and I, we can build this nation. So let us together start that PNM revolution. So when an election day bell is rung, we know we will beat them in the East. We will beat them in the West. We move and throughout our twin island nation from Mayaro to Tobago from San Fernando to Palaseco, shouting and rejoicing in one united voice. And say it with me, great is the PNM, great is the PNM, great is the PNM, and we shall prevail.
for, for Senator Ranuka Sagrang Singh Suklal. Brothers and sisters, the PNM doesn't create members. We create leaders. And to come to the stage at this time, I want you to put your hands together and welcome a man who was forged in the foundry of the PNM, the youngest assemblyman in the history of the Tobago House of Assembly and our former chief secretary, and who, when election comes again in Tobago, will be the next chief secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. Put your hands together and welcome Brother Ansel Dennis. Thank you very much, PNM people. Good evening. You're looking red and you're looking lovely. Of course, let me recognize the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and our distinguished political leader, Dr. the Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley and Mrs. Rowley. Welcome back to Queen's Park Savannah. We're on our 50th convention. You just heard from the young powerhouse, Renuka Sagram Singh Suklal. She was energetic. Senator Hislop from Tobago has just opened the Tobago arm. We have Ansel Dennis from Tobago. Now, folks, the democracy in the PNM accepts who we are, where we've been, and where we're headed to. If you look at our history, we have accepted and embraced the democracy of this country. Tobago has had its experiment. Tobago has seen a new political party take control of the THA, but the Tobago arm of the PNM, out in their numbers today, have brought the forces back to the fore, as our party is the longest serving political party in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. And what we do is we reflect on where we are, and then we plan on where we're headed to. So on stage right now, Ansel Dennis is giving us the Tobago experience as the PNM is a party in Trinidad and Tobago. There is no other political party that has run in every election, in every seat, be it local government or be it general election, every single time. And that's what we're seeing here today. Tobago section, my own San Fernando section, the Port of Spain section, we're in large numbers here today. We're looking at the election of our officers, the political leader who is contested, many of our other office holders, this contest. We are doing this on a one man, one vote equation in the full public glare. No other political party does this kind of event where we demonstrate our democracy. There are scrutinaires, there are people that actually come very close to what a general or local government election looks like. So this energy is what we're sharing with you today live from the Queen's Park Savannah, and we're gonna head into further speeches. Let's join Ansel Dennis on stage. Let's pick up a little bit more of the vibrancy of where Tobago is right now, and stay with us. It's 50 and we're live. In 1980, and let me take the opportunity as well to congratulate and wish all Tobagonians, whether you are living in Tobago or Trinidad, happy Tobago Day. Because today is December the 4th, and today is the day where we normally celebrate Tobago Day. It's an opportunity for us to reflect as Tobagonians and as citizens of this country on the development journey of Tobago. And as PNM people, you are well aware that from 1980 to now, the People's National Movement was in charge of Tobago for just about 50% of that time. Orville London, a great man who I respect and admire, took responsibility for the affairs of Tobago in 2001. And of course, we led Tobago with distinction, we led Tobago with honesty, we led Tobago with credibility up until December 2021. And I want to boast a little bit about the PNM's track record in Tobago. Because, of course, when we assumed office in Tobago, there was a great lack as it relates to 
employment opportunities, as it relates to the availability of community facilities, sporting facilities, opportunities for our young people, and even our seniors. And I want to say to you that in 20 years, the People's National Movement in Tobago, with the assistance of PNM governments in Trinidad, transformed Tobago significantly. And I can boast today that PNM administrations over many years, we have done the work to ensure that as I speak, in every community in Tobago, there exists community facilities in the form of a community center. There exists sporting facilities, tennis courts, playing fields. The infrastructure in Tobago, and I'm sorry I have to boast, it is far better than many places in Trinidad. And that is because of the hard work of Orville London, followed by Kelvin Charles, followed by the last political leader, Mrs. Tracy Davidson Celestine. And I want to give you the assurance that as the new political leader of the Tobago PNM Council, I vow to continue that development trajectory when we get back into office. Because the people of Tobago made a decision. They decided to give another party a chance. They campaigned as PDP. And today we are not sure if they are still PDP or if they are Farley and friends or as what Sun Duke is now referring to them as, the jellyfish gang. So they gave them a chance. And as the PNM always does, we accepted the results 14-1, and we went back to the drawing boards. We had our internal elections. We conducted our internal affairs in a disciplined manner. And today, I can say to you without fear of contradiction, the PNM in Tobago is readying itself to rescue Tobago from the hands of these misfits. Because in 10 short months, we have seen unprecedented levels of corruption, unprecedented levels of political victimization, unprecedented levels of the blatant sellout of Tobago's resources. And just imagine the Minister of Finance after the budget exercise allocated Tobago what is legally due to it, some 4.3% thereabout. I think the minimum is 4.03. We got a little bit more than that. $300 million of that was allocated to Tobago's development budget. Imagine this administration under the PDP saw it fit to take the entire $300 million and transfer it back to Trinidad in the hands of contractors from Trinidad. And I'm saying to you that when the PNM was in office for 16 years, we ensured that we placed Tobago first. We ensured that all the work that could have been done by Tobagonians was done by Tobagonians. We ensured that all the opportunities stayed in Tobago. And it's not that we have an issue with Trinidad. As a matter of fact, the PNM is the only national party. We understand the importance of the unitary state of Trinidad and Tobago. But at the same time, the Tobago House of Assembly was established to take care of the business of Tobago people. And what we have in office today is an administration that is linked to the UNC and that are teaming up with the UNC to undermine the development and the interests of Tobago. But I say to you today that we in the PNM Tobago will not rest. We have our work to do, and we will ensure that we continue to do what is required to prepare ourselves to rescue Tobago from the hands of this evil and wicked PDP administration. So we will not rest until, of course, Tobago get its rightful autonomy. As a national party, we will not rest 
As a matter of fact, we cannot rest until we find solutions to our crime problem and our issues with general lawlessness in this country. We will not rest. We will not rest until we find solutions to our flooding issues and until we are able to build a country that is more resilient to the ravaging effects of climate change that affects the entire world. We will not rest. We will not rest as a national party until, of course, we find solutions to every single problem that affects us here in Trinidad and Tobago. Because while we boast of a proud track record, and while we have contributed significantly to the development of this country, development is a journey and it must continue. So I am proud to be part of the PNM's history and the PNM's legacy. And of course, we will continue under the leadership of Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley to ensure that we continue to build Trinidad and Tobago, to ensure that we continue to pursue Vision 2030 so that Trinidad and Tobago will continue to be the most vibrant economy and the star of the Caribbean. And that is the promise and that is the future that the PNM guarantees Trinidad and Tobago. So once again, let me take this opportunity to congratulate all of us as PNM people who continue to work in the trenches, who continue to do what is necessary to ensure that we build this great party because this party is important to Trinidad and Tobago. So as I close, I want to congratulate our Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley. Give him a round of applause. Because our PNM government, for the last seven years, we have not had it easy. We inherited a situation where the treasury was pillaged by that band of bandits called the People's Partnership. We inherited a period where the economic circumstances were very difficult. And if that was not enough, by 2019, we had to face a raging pandemic. But thank God Almighty that Dr. Eric Williams in 1956 established the PNM. And thank God Almighty that the people of Trinidad and Tobago made the right decision in 2015 to elect Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley as Prime Minister. Because if it were not for the PNM standing in the gap during that pandemic, crap out its smoke or your pipe. So of course, let us continue to be proud of this party and proud of our track record and as we look into the future, I want to guarantee you that we will turn things around in Tobago in three years or less. I want to guarantee you that this PNM government in Trinidad and Tobago will continue to ensure that we seek the interests of every citizen. And when we would have done that, of course, we can always say, great is the PNM, great is the PNM, great is the PNM, and we have prevailed. I want to thank Brother Dennis for his stirring reminders about Tobago and what Tobago means to the national conversation. At this time, let's welcome to do a special presentation the chairman of the party's research committee. And I see that we're all having a wonderful convention. And if you're having a wonderful convention, put your hands together for the chairman of the convention organizing committee, the MP for St. Anne's East and Minister of Education, the Honorable Minister, Dr. Nyan Gadsby Dolly.
National Movement, Dr. Keith Rowley and Mrs. Rowley, the Executive of the People's National Movement. The PNM has always had a relationship of love, utmost respect, and care for education. I compare this easily to a good marriage. This relationship epitomizes the best version of the care a good husband bestows unto a wife. The People's National Movement looks out for education. It prioritizes education. It funds education. It advances education and guards jealously the opportunity, right, and access to education for every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, every creed, race, gender, class. Nothing debars any citizen of Trinidad and Tobago from a free education and the opportunity for social mobility. That focus on education alone is enough to say, great is the PNM. So join me in saying it, great is the PNM. We speak to legacy today, the legacy of the PNM on this our 50th convention day. At the end of 1880, there were a total of 96 schools operating in Trinidad, three secondary, two model schools, 52 government primary schools, and 39 government-assisted schools. The main examination in those days for entering the secondary school system was college exhibition. That was the forerunner to the common entrance and now the SEA. The college exhibition awarded placement to a handful of brilliant boys to Queen's Royal College and St. Mary's College. And therefore, the demand for secondary education was consistently more than the supply. This was a source of anxiety for many parents, for if you were not able to pay for secondary school, the probability of your child being educated and achieving social mobility was close to zero. But thank God for the PNM. Thank God for the PNM. It is only through the intervention of a PNM government that today, in 2022, we can boast of managing over 800 public schools with over 13,000 teachers, educating for free over 225,000 of our young citizens. Indeed, great is the PNM. And without the determination of the PNM to educate our citizens, these young people that stand here before you may well not have been able to do that. Look at them, all products of PNM policy. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Article 2 of the Constitution of the PNM speaks to the founding principles upon which this great party is forged. And who better to expose these principles than the children of the nation, children who owe their educational development and achievements, as I do, as we all do, to the policies of the PNM. Today, join me in welcoming on stage the children of the PNM, our little ones in whom we are well pleased, and they will recite to you and to us the objectives of the PNM. The PNM is a political organization pledged to the maintenance of the rule of law, founded upon democratic principles, basic human rights and dignity, and dedicated to the raising of the moral and material standards of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, and to the promotion of their progress in all fields, political, economic, social, moral, and cultural. To this end, 
the PNM specifically pledges itself to give special emphasis to the following objectives. We welcome Delise, Francesca, Kayleen, Thais, Kairos, Kelsey, Jace, Kaylee, Nyla Marie, Nalisha, Zaria, and Isabel to read to us these objectives. Preservation of the national independence for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The promotion and maintenance of the democratic way of life in Trinidad and Tobago. The development of an educated democracy participating actively in the conduct of public affairs by the promotion of po political education and practical training. The raising of the level of economic productivity of the people by planned and rational development of the country's resources, both human and physical. A higher standard of living for all, both moral and material, the elimination of those conditions in community which give a rise to juvenile delinquency and antisocial behavior. The provision of social security for all, the encouragement of proper industrial relations practices, and effective democratic trade unionism. Equality of opportunity for all and a career open to talent. The elimination of all forms of discrimination in public life. The integration of the many racial and cultural strains which have contributed to the development of our cosmopolitan society. Economic integration of and cultural collaboration among the various countries of the Caribbean in the interest of the political dignity. Economic development and social being of its peoples. Collaboration with the international community in the world's struggle for, the, for an environmentally sustainable earth, the establishment of a just society, and the achievement of lasting peace. Of applause. A true PNM is a patriot. A true PNM loves and serves Trinidad and Tobago. Having heard and recommitted to the principles and objectives of the PNM, I invite you now to let our children lead us once again in reaffirming our commitment to Trinidad and Tobago. I encourage you now to stand with us, place your hand on your patriotic PNM heart, and recite the National Pledge of Trinidad and Tobago. I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of my God and my country. I will honor my parents, my teachers, my leaders, and my elders, and those in authority. I will be clean and honest in all my thoughts, my words, and my deeds. I will strive in everything I do to work together with my Now that we have reaffirmed our commitment to Trinidad and Tobago, that commitment epitomized by the stated and written objectives of the PNM, I invite you to welcome our children as they sign their names with a golden pen. choice. 
Hi, good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, we are here live at Queen's Park, Savannah for our 50th convention. And of course, I'm here to bring a report about what has been going on in Tobago at this time. You know, as the lone minority voice in the Tobago House of Assembly, ably assisted by Councillor Benoit, we have been really speaking to the issues and the challenges of Tobagoans. Many of them would have lost their jobs. Many of them are unable to get the basic services at this time. And we continue to advocate and remind the current PDP administration that Tobagoans gave them an opportunity because they wanted to f they, they, they wanted to see what the alternative to the PNM would have been. And we know, Dr. Williams said it best, the alternative to the PNM is chaos and confusion. And we are seeing that playing out in Tobago at this time. Minority Councillor? Yes. So it is true, this administration and has not been doing what they promised to do. And we are here at the Queen's Park Savannah. It is, the energy continues to build and we are seeing a sea of red. PNM and m out. The vibe is nice. Yes. The energy is high. Everyone just, is in a we went, we went from a children's choir on stage reciting the 13 objectives of the PNM into them singing about the golden pen yeah. and now joined by Isasha. So you know, there's plenty energy here at the 50th convention. <laughs> there is still time to come on down to the Queen's Park Savannah. Yes. Yes, come on down. Come on down. So yes, so maybe we should give them some of the action. Maybe we should try stage side. Okay, so yes. All right. Yes. So let's go stage side. Take in some of the action. On the song and song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, your poor PDP and him. Is a 
treaty. I bless the nation, the Caribbean envy. But I'm a sudden like the place get heavy. Things not move right. God no like ugly. Sick of my people, let's do this together. Build back this nation for one another. Say come on, come on, the children deserve better. Nobody struggle, tell them don't in a dia. And even when the things get so bad, it's only one man alone. Give I and I my reward. My mama always tell me, stay away from trouble daily. Keep away from bad company. Anything you want, ask the Almighty. Tell them, say, Uja. Tell them, the matter how hard it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here, over there, over there. Come on, tell them say Ucha. Tell them don't matter how hard things. There is an important part of the truth. Let me hear for them know it. Tell them remember Elijah. We stand up in the chariot. And do remember Daniel. We sit up in the lion's den. Somebody, somebody remember Salamon. We walk up on this earth as a wise man. When you want King David, one day we shout out a PNM family. Tell them say Ucha. Pull up. If all they love PNM, somebody say yeah, yeah, yeah. One more before we leave. One more. Bring them up fast. A 
truly love my PM family. And yo, don't you know I love his And tell them that one, Yali. Got in Telegram, and I got to the one, Telegina. To the pizza, when I made this me and. Can you love and I up a with some, some, some? Yo, baby, and I'm in this girlfriend, baby, and gold, yo. Yo, better go take your time, take a long bit, cause we are young. I don't like back and I need a confusion. Brush into this thing, I write to no sing me song. Don't you lie, I love is a... For my PM family, I love you. Never forget you. Sing it out. Tell them say, tell them, 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 Party Chairman, Party Vice Chairman, Lady Vice Chairman, Deputy Political Leaders, Party General Secretary, other party officers, members and supporters, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens all, assembled here at the historic Queen's Park Savannah, and the many thousands of you who are following us at home or at other locations here and abroad. Welcome, welcome to yet another PNM milestone. Permit me to begin my presentation today with a famous quotation from a British author. He said, and I quote, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch 
of incredulity. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair, unquote. What a time. Maybe, as Charles Dickens, the venerable English author, wrote these immortal words, 163 years ago, maybe he foretold our current time in Trinidad and Tobago, and maybe the world. He could have been referring to the drastic economic and financial decline of 2015, or the historic, devastating COVID-19 pandemic, which descended upon us in 2020 and took thousands of lives, including my best friend, only a few days ago. He could have been talking about the many streets and homes in these small islands, where there exist murderers and their accomplices who have supervised the killing of well over 500 of our citizens during this current year. Could he have foreseen the ravages of nature where climate and weather suffocate us with drought, followed by widespread flooding, which traps so many families in painful, destructive, and frustrating environments with rushing water, passing, ponding, lingering, and dangerous disruptive landslides all over the nation. All of this to the sound of accompanying protests and the sights of unrest. Not surprisingly, this is the same period where we strove manfully to successfully overcome much of our seemingly unending difficulties, even as we defended and nursed our broken economy, managed stifling debts, confronted the criminal element, provided increased opportunity for the development of our young people, and sustained strong support for the elderly and the needy. Hidden deep in that Dickinson description are lessons for the resilient people of Trinidad and Tobago. Lessons that say that things are not always what they seem and that as bad as they may be, there are possibilities to change and transform to a better tomorrow. It identifies and appeals to a sense of optimism rather than dwell on the opposition's excitement at the prospect of looming national destruction as they encourage tales of foreboding with daily unhelpful narratives of crushing despair. Our experiences, like Dickens' 18th century observations, teach us that hard times do not last forever. Of all the incredible moments that I have had and which has fallen to me as your political leader to be able to address you at this historic occasion of our 50th convention, this opportunity I count among my greatest privilege. Almost 67 years ago to the day, the People's National Movement held its first convention in 1956. The PNM has sustained many generations, and we can now proudly see the next cohort standing boldly, reciting the objectives of the PNM's constitution, and introducing me, the political leader, at our party's 50th annual convention here at the Grandstand. Our first leader said that the future of our nation is in the school bag of our children. I would like to add that not only the future of our nation, but the future of our great party is still in the bags, the tablets, and the computers of all those who would subscribe to the principles that we espouse. The next 50 conventions are exactly in the hands of these children 
who did such a magnificent job in advancing the ideas, values, and principles that were enshrined in our Constitution 66 years ago. It is those principles and ideologies that have always animated and underpinned the PNM's idea of country, of the birth of a nation. It calls out to our national actions, our decisions, and above all, our duty in all things. It was in gatherings like this that Dr. Eric Eustace Williams presented to us our own collective dream of a post-colonial and free society. It embodied a dream that was cautiously secreted in the hearts and minds of our parents and grandparents, whether they were in sugar, in oil, whether they were teachers, clerics, or port workers alike. A dream that started with our father standing on a bench at Woodford Square. A dream that was taught by some to be beyond citizens from the humblest means to the more well-resourced in our society. Dr. Williams sowed the seeds of the idea of independence and full self-determination as manifested in our republicanism. Free from external domination and the mental shackles to which the people of the colonies were then bound. It was Dr. Williams who issued that historic call to all the people of this country to take responsibility for these islands and make a nation out of them. On such a glorious foundation, let us, the beneficiaries of that legacy, not ever be found wanting. That call and those seeds fell on the good soil in the minds of our grandparents and parents in their homes and in their communities. The answer to that call to birth this independent nation was led by the PNM and its members and supporters. Dr. Williams lauded the efforts of the modern concept of the country of Trinidad and Tobago and shaped the people of the PNM in the idea of nationhood. We hold that your party, our party, with its confident, bold assertion that the PNM is, and I quote for the nth time, we are no ordinary party in the accepted narrow sense of the word, that we are rather a rally, a convention of all and for all, a mobilization of all the forces in the community, cutting across race and religion, class and color, with emphasis on united action by all the people in the common cause." Unquote. It remains so. That call is enlightening and has been answered every day for 66 years and 50 conventions by exactly you who have gathered here in action. We are here because we believe that this movement is extraordinary in every way, and we see and say it every day. The PNM is a convergence point of people who have heard the call, whether as ordinary members or office holders, whether you are in the Women's League, in the constituency, in the Central Executive, the General Council, the Tobago Island Council. We have all been called and have answered the call to be the best political movement in this country, which stands as the institution for united action by all the people in the common cause and service of all in this nation. Every one of us at this 50th convention has everything in common with those in the first convention, more than you think. I can tell you about the people in the first convention. They were the ones that held the burning national ambition in their hearts, held confidence and aspirations, and were ready to do the work, to take responsibility, to build a country, and leave one greater than they met it. They were the ones that began with almost nothing. There was no national flag, no anthem, no coat of arms, but they believed this country could be and would be forged from the love of liberty. Ladies and gentlemen, 
it is that same burning ambition and grit that has kept us rallied and mobilized in the common good every day for the last 66 years. It is that same burning ambition that lifted me as a barefoot schoolboy from Mason Hall, Tobago, to gladly fill my book bag and prepared me for a life of service, whether in the fields or in the office. It is that same ambition that caused people like Joan Yule Williams, Jarrett Narain, John Donaldson, Terry Rondon, and the thousands who leave their homes, the comfort of their families, night after night, because it is simple. It's for a stronger PNM, because a stronger PNM means a stronger Trinidad and Tobago. It is that burning ambition that has made the PNM the most progressive and forward-thinking political force in this nation for more than three generations. In this party, we say, great is the PNM. The PNM is great because you, the people, are great. The PNM is great because we work to make the country and the people great. Great is the PNM. The PNM's vision for this country was initially set out in a number of five-year development programs as in the early days. To this end, the PNM currently follows the roadmaps of Vision 2020 and Vision 2030. And it represents us discharging our responsibility that we have committed to, to the people as we assume responsibility for solving the nation's basket of pressing problems which need attention, we rose to every situation with confidence and frequent successful outcomes. Our commitment to the health of the nation holds us true to whether it is confronting the deadly coronavirus, COVID-19, or drafting and executing the post-COVID roadmap to recovery policy. All the while, we ensure that the normal level of health care that was delivered was sustained at every level because we established and maintained a parallel health care system specifically to handle and cope with the demands for administering care to COVID patients. Undoubtedly, many lives were saved and much suffering was reduced, even as sadly some battles were lost from time to time. In recognition of where we have been during the worst of this COVID experience and in anticipation of continued improvement towards its eradication, I will be gathering with some of our religious leaders on the morning of Sunday, 11, next Sunday, to give thanks for the blessings that we have received. And I ask all citizens, wherever you worship or even at home on that day, let's make it a day of prayer all over this nation. Let us pray that COVID, which has not gone away, and let's pay attention to it, because it is still there, and it could mutate and resurge. Only this morning, I noticed some authorities in a few areas around the world where the virus is active to the point where mandatory mask wearing is being considered if infection levels continue to rise and threaten during the winter months. Still be on your guard about COVID. It is to be noted that during the difficult period, 2015 to 2022, that we completed and commissioned the new Cuba hospital. We built the Arima hospital, the Point Fortin hospital, and the outstanding Diego Martin Health Facility. We, all, we also constructed the Roxborough Hospital and we are constructing the long-awaited Sangre Grande Hospital. Many of these facilities played a pivotal role in our success in delivering health care and management to COVID patients. This was a time when the PNM government and our public health officials were saving lives 
and creating thousands of job opportunities for the construction workers who built these facilities and others. How welcome would it have been if we could have received even tacit support from our UNC parliamentary colleagues? If not in deeds, even a kind word would have contributed. But instead, what we got were harebrained prescriptions of sunshine and punching, hydroxychloroquine and chlorine, as well as outrageous lies, irresponsible accusations, and deliberate misinformation. What was particularly galling with this behavior of our opposition parliamentarians is that much of the insults and the lies were aimed at demoralizing the professional medical staff who were risking their very own lives on COVID-written wards, even as they were under attack in the form of baseless claims of medical misconduct or incompetence. Incidentally, of the 60-odd legal matters which they sponsored in court, the state won every single one of them. And this includes one that went all the way to the Privy Council, alleging that the government of Trinidad and Tobago had behaved unconstitutionally in acting firmly with dispatch to save lives in Trinidad and Tobago. So bad was this onslaught on our health care givers that you, the taxpayer, had to fork out $14 million to pay legal fees to defend our medical staff from attacks by opposition UNC members. Ladies and gentlemen, however, have no fear. The rest of, the rest of us acknowledge the yeoman service of our health sector, standing in the breach for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And it is in recognition of this unique situation that the Minister of Finance, on your behalf, on my approach to the Cabinet, has instructed the immediate distribution of $260 million to be paid to the healthcare workers at all levels before Christmas. The minister advises me that the payments are ready and have begun to be made to the respective workers. We also reaffirm the new energy and public, in public housing and in education policy. It is in putting together these policies and mobilizing the forces in our communities for the common cause is where the PNM has dreamed, visioned out, adopted, and worked to execute on our biggest actions for the common good. We in the PNM have always been the place and space of possibility. The PNM is the party of big ideas. The PNM is at the epicenter of actions that have been seismic in scale across generations in this country. We are the party of free education and free health care. We are the PNM. We knew the surest word to live every citizen to a better life was granting every child access to opportunity to education. In other words, the words of Dr. Williams, he said, education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today." Unquote. Fellow party members, I see myself as living proof of that successful education policy. The younger generation may not know how difficult and challenging something as that, something as obvious as that, and how it was for the party when we embraced it in the beginning. That was our job and the mission then, and it remains our job and mission now. I want to tell all that look to the PNM for inspiration while simultaneously conspiring in the political bed of convenience, while spouting statements like politics has a morality of its own and yesterday is yesterday and today is today and party before country. We in the PNM will have no part of that. 
Dr. Williams was very prophetic when he said to us, the alternative to the PNM is chaos and confusion. We see it, we experience it, we know it, and they promise it. What exactly is an offer in the opposition? We know that they have an overflowing reservoir of negative vibes to draw from. There's also a copious stream of disrespect, vulgarity, insults, and invectives. But where are the useful alternatives? Every Sunday, they religiously summon the media to try and bust a mark. Every Monday night, the recluse comes out to have a forum, but is never available to receive and respond to a question from the media. So far, the highlights of their existence have been an uncanny interest in my sheep in Tobago, in my family building, which they have added two floors onto, and of course, the life and times, the life and the good times of me and my wife. That is the political contribution of the UNC as Trinidad and Tobago's opposition. So vacuous and vapid are these rattles that one shudders to think where the ship of state would be if they were at the helm. Ladies and gentlemen, we look at ourselves and our country. We look back a bit and we see that financially 2008 was our best year for earnings at the national level. Market prices were good. We had the levels of reserves in the gas fields. We were enjoying a budgetary surplus and were putting savings in the bank and savings in the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. Then came the sudden collapse of Lehman Brothers in New York, taking Wall Street with it. And come 2009, the world was a very different place for all of us. At home, Clico ran out of money and facing catastrophic, catastrophic bankruptcy, reached out to the government for help, which took the form of a multi-billion dollar bailout and the central bank supervisory intervention in this giant company. Notwithstanding the fact that the very fortunate few, some of which are known to you, insiders they were, they were able to get their money out and their deposits of their family and close friends. But this development only brought anxiety and trauma for the rest of us who had to live with the dramatic circumstances. As a government backbencher at the time, I was assured that the quantum of the bailout was about $5 billion. In the end, it turned out to be more like $30 billion. Not only did they not know that the giant company was in trouble before the collapse, but they had no idea what it would cost to right the ship. Such experts, you still see them on television and hear them on the radio, they were useless then and they are even more useless now. From 2009 to 2021, the facts are this country operated without a balanced budget or budgetary surplus. Even with oil, with prices at well over $100 a barrel in the period 2012 to 2014, no attempt was made to balance the budget or to put the fiscal account into surplus. Instead, what we saw was that every effort was made to spend every cent that was earned, and even where the law required that sums of the surplus be put in the Heritage Fund, to the extent that deposits were made into that fund, it was done by borrowing to meet the legal obligations. In short, they borrowed to put money into the savings account. Today, from the purgatory of the opposition benches, 
They have, up, they have appointed themselves heavyweights of fiscal and monetary policy who are constantly crying down everything in the country and giving advice on how everything should be done. I ask you to ignore them and hold fast to the PNM. The experiences of 2009 are still with us and in more ways than one will be with us for a very long time. Only last Thursday, the central bank finally handed back Clico to the shareholders and the Clico investment fund is to be wound up since this company Clico has now returned to health and has discharged its obligations in the context of the 2009 bailout. However, that is not the whole story because the liquidation of the Clico subsidiary, Clico parent company, CLF, has left the government holding huge portfolios of assets in manufacturing, finance, and arising for the same bailout process. It is important that you, the taxpayer, know that whilst the PNM did the bailout to save companies and more so protect the national economy, and the UNC continued the process to protect the many thousands at risk depositors, the question of repayment of the debt to the Treasury remained largely outstanding and had to be dealt with by the incoming PNM administration. I consider the successful management of this assignment to be one of the most outstanding achievements of this government which I lead. We were told by a UNC administration that the Clico matter had been settled and therefore all was well. However, not much was said about the debt owed by CLF, the parent company that still owed taxpayers substantial billions of dollars. Upon coming into office, we faced a resurgent group of claimants demanding that the government get off the CLF board and that the government surrender the chairmanship and accept that the liability of billions owing will not be acknowledged because they will not sign the IOU. You, the taxpayer, whose billions were involved, should take careful note of the fact that the UNC never had a word to say in support of the government's effort to recover these billions of dollars. We took the matter to court, and even then, there were ex-office holders from both sides of the political divide who were against the government for acting on behalf of taxpayers. The long and short of the whole story is that we won in the court. CLF was put into receivership. As we recovered assets from the CLF group, a new question arose. What is to become of these and other assets? All this time, the UNC, not surprisingly, maintained an unusual deathly silence as the PNM battled for the taxpayer and other citizens' interests. In the end, the PNM government, after careful deliberation, took the decision to establish a national investment fund using the quality shareholding which the government now holds to back bonds to be redeemed for cash by citizens who may wish to invest in this country's future while seizing the opportunity to become proud shareholders of a wider patrimony. When the bonds were eventually offered to citizens by the National Investment Fund, the NIF, not surprisingly, true to form, the UNC finally found a voice, but this time, as usual, it was to sow doubt and discouragement. The leader of the opposition was out front, advising citizens that they should not invest in the NIF. They should not buy those bonds because it was Imbert's Ponzi scheme. They carried on the same way when the minister offered a block of FCB shares to the public. First, they prosecuted a misleading story 
about an FCB investment in Jamaica. Then after they entertained the gullible with that, they then launched a full frontal attack on FCB, the government bank, your bank. Happily, the UNC was studiously ignored and the investing public purchased over four billion dollars of the NIF bond offering, backed by a basket of Republic Bank shares and other quality instruments. You, the little man, you, the little woman, you share in it to the involvement of the National Insurance Board, who owns $586 million of those shares, and the Unitrust, who owns $490 million of those bonds. As of today, contrary to what was said by the opposition leader, the NIF has paid out $890 million in dividends to the bondholders and have put $177 million into the sinking fund to ensure that the bonds can be redeemed upon maturity. The central bank has cleaned up the CLECO bailout. We are recovering the taxpayers' money from CLF. We have created new financial instruments. We have broadened the share ownership in the country. And we have demonstrated confidence in our own ability to handle the country's future. All in a day's work for a government that governs in the national interest. The other takeaway from the 2008 to 2015 experience that we should learn from as we grapple with the current and future decision making is how easily and how quickly circumstances can change. Sometimes for the better, but frequently for the worse. This should not frighten us or diminish our confidence, but we need to be careful as we are required to be courageous. The unwelcome entry of COVID, the Ukraine invasion, the ravages of climate change, and the chronic existence of murderous criminality in our own society are all causes for serious concern. Recently, we weathered some aspects of the economic storms. Our manufacturing and other non-oil sectors have bounced back well and are currently contributing more to the gross domestic product than the energy sector. The national budget for 2023 is close to being in balance and the final accounts of 2022 might very well end up showing that we did in fact have a small surplus. These are grounds for great enthusiasm as we continue to extract the most from the total hydrocarbon sector and keep looking for new markets for our, man our manufactured products. At the beginning of my tenure as Prime Minister in 2015, taking the helm of this kind of very troubling environment, it was clear that resources were scarce and that some hard decisions had to be taken if we were to make the best of the many challenging situations. Some predicted an inexorable march to the IMF as our foreign exchange was projected by them to dry up well before we could influence any improvement. Others advised, in fact, they demanded that we devalue the currency as the only obvious way out of our predicament. Whilst I agreed that readjustment was required, I gave the country the assurance then that where these adjustments were required, we will make and take our own medicine and will steer this country away from any IMF program. We have kept that commitment. We are under no IMF prescription. Our foreign exchange has not dried up. On the contrary, today we have foreign exchange for eight and a half months of import cover. 
This is well above the standard yardstick of three months for comfortable balance of payment operations. Our debt burden has eased with the debt to GDP ratio having improved from a high of 89% to the current level of 69%. As we take stock of where we are and how things are going, we find that we have done the first part of the job. Had we resorted to devaluing the currency, it would have wreaked havoc on the poorer citizens who would have seen imported inflationary pressures well beyond anything that we are seeing now or are called upon to grapple with. Many, many more families would have fallen well below the poverty line and the social fabric, damaged as it might be now, would have been in total tatters. The crime situation certainly would not have improved and many of our thriving small and medium businesses in the private sector would have struggled more or even find themselves going under. The government would have struggled to keep up with the increased demand from the social sector budget and unemployment levels would have exploded. I'll tell you one thing though, those who would have advised that would not have been around to take responsibility for the advice if we had taken the advice and created those conditions in this country. Those with foreign currency access at home and abroad would have prospered, but the average Mr. and Mistress Trinidad and Tobago would have suffered immensely. Devaluation does not increase the amount of foreign currency available. It simply makes what is available more expensive. The government is aware that a significant section of the national population, public sector employees included, has been under pressure for quite some time. And the relentless pressure brought on by necessary fixes need to be eased. While we should do nothing to break the thin ice of the improved financial situation that we are skating on, we must find ways to bring relief to the population without being greedy or reckless with the life of the goose that has to lay some eggs for us. Not surprisingly, the offer of 4% to public servants to cover the period 2014 to 2019 was not received with any enthusiasm by the labor leadership. I don't blame them. The matter has progressed to the tribunal for independent assessment and the government is eager for an early decision so that the consequential payments can be made to public servants as soon as possible. I am personally grateful that more and more members of the government employee groups are seeing it possible to accept the offer on the table as the, as the best that's available at the moment in the hope that the next period could be negotiated quickly. And if the national fortunes continue to improve, then a better offer may be on the horizon to get us all back to the hopeful end of a, rel of a relative difficult period. Ladies and gentlemen, we settled 800, we settled 8.4 billion Trinidad and Tobago dollars in claims against the National Gas Company. As a result of gas curtailment incurred during the UNC period, arising out of the result of the naivete and mismanagement of the sector. We reversed the UNC Greenfield priority policy of gas allocation, which exposed NGC and the government to billions of dollars in claims for contracted gas that could not be supplied. 
When this situation started to develop in 2014, true to form, they misled the country by telling us that the shortage of gas then was as a result of maintenance works that were going on and that things would soon return to normal production once this was over. Nothing was further from the truth. It was really a dangerous deterioration of our ability to actually supply from diminishing gas reserves. The situation seriously affected the production levels in the downstream companies, threatened the viability of the petrochemical sector at Point Lisas and the LNG plants at Point Fortin, and even dampened the future of Trinidad and Tobago as a major participant in the hydrocarbon business. It was this looming disaster that drove your PNM government to invest time in cranking up exploration activities in our deep water acreage and principled efforts in negotiations with Venezuela in search of additional gas supply from across the border and an agreement to exploit the reserves from the Loran Manatee field on the Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela border. By 2018, we had successfully engaged these assignments. However, the coming imposition of U.S. sanctions on Venezuela halted further progress on this matter, which is so very important to the people of Trinidad and Tobago as well as Venezuela. Notwithstanding these setbacks, we persevered in Caracas and in Washington and maintain hope for a good outcome sometime in the not too distant future. In order to be able to manage the onerous debt payment of 850 million US dollars, which was due August, 18, 28, August 2018, as well as eliminate the projected losses of $5 billion a year going forward, we restructured Petrotrin. In the process, we paid out to ex petrochemical workers $2.7 billion in separation payments, and that was paid in cash. With Petrotrin as the holding company continuing in operation, we established the subsidiaries Heritage and Paria, which immediately saw the recreation of 1,000 jobs. And of course, Heritage and Paria are not profitable and are paying, in the case of Heritage, billions of dollars in royalties, in supplemental petroleum tax, and other taxes and profits to the Treasury, while servicing the $850 million US debt, which the Ministry of Finance could not have dealt with without serious downgrade of the national financial system. We negotiated 28 new gas supply agreements with BP, Shell, EOG, and Woodside, Woodside being the company which has replaced BHP. And we are providing the people of this country and our partners with predictable long-term contracts and not the month-to-month -month arrangements that we met in place. That has resulted in the principles I just mentioned, investing billions of dollars more into operations here in Trinidad and Tobago. We had the spotlight on energy, where we exposed value leakage in the LNG sector, and we set about to negotiate with the major companies to get better returns for Trinidad and Tobago without breaking contracts or litigating a single existing contract. As a direct result of these negotiations, we have earned since 2018 to July 2022 $11.4 billion in additional revenue, which we would not have earned had we not initiated and successfully completed these negotiations. Over the period 2015 to 2022, NGC has secured 97 downstream gas supply contracts and extensions. We have been working tirelessly to restructure Atlantic LNG, and on Tuesday of this week, 
a formal announcement will be made on the outcome of this initiative. We moved the singular reference selling pricing of LNG from the Henry Hub to a basket of LNG prices which are consistently more lucrative. This has had the effect of generating significant increases in our unit pricing and billions of dollars more for you. This is how the PNM does it. This is because we are the PNM. We negotiated and signed a commercial term sheet for Venezuelan gas from the Dragon Field, which lies only 17 kilometers west of our hibiscus platform, which we jointly own with Shell in the vicinity of the Bocas. We negotiated to delink Manatee from the Venezuelan land share of the field Ran Manatee and negotiated a production sharing agreement with Shell to produce from that field, which will be the largest gas production project for the past decade and a half. I led a delegation to Melbourne in Australia to encourage BHP to agree to invest and produce the Ruby Delaware field. This was successful in that the company agreed to sanction the investment and provided itself with 500 million US dollars. And today, that field, whilst not delivering the volumes as initially anticipated, is not an insignificant contributor to oil in a good market. As a result of our work and a market that turned favorable, we can report to you today that our gross domestic product, the size of the economy, in 2021 was $150 billion. As we approach the end of 2022, the size of the economy is now $190 billion. And of course, this country has collected $11 billion more than was originally budgeted in the last budget of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, surprisingly, there were marked improvements in our non-oil sector, which in the immediate late pandemic period rivaled the oil sector in its contribution to the country's tax receipts. We negotiated better terms with the Japanese for the investment that they were making in Labre, and that negotiation significantly reduced and eliminated some of the exposure that the government and NGC had. But sadly, the project still costs NGC billions of dollars in losses. That is the only project negotiated and implemented in the energy sector by the UNC. We should not be surprised. While we were doing all of this for you, do you know what the, you know what the UNC was doing? They were fabricating and publishing lies about Paria, saying that this state company was secretly trading in fuels in violation of US sanctions on Venezuela. Having given life to the lie in parliament, they then engaged in writing to the US authorities, pleading with them to put sanctions on Rowley and Young. That was after they publicly called on the United States to put sanctions on Trinidad and Tobago for talking to Venezuela and allowing Vice President Delcy Rodriguez to visit Trinidad. All of this was as they actively and conscientiously undermined our carefully crafted foreign policy by siding with foreigners to accuse us of violating the Rio Treaty by not agreeing to bring about regime change in Venezuela at the request of a foreign power which had attempted to install an itinerant president of their choice in neighboring Venezuela. Even as Trinidad and Tobago was coming into the chairmanship of CARICOM and taking a leadership role in CARICOM 
and was advancing the Montevideo Accord, aimed at advancing dialogue between the parties in Venezuela as a substitute for military intervention to bring about regime change in that country, that country our closest neighbor. To this day, the UNC steadfastly refuses to support the national effort and are still attempting to undermine our national foreign policy at every turn. Last week, the US government relaxed its opposition to renewed oil production in Venezuela by US oil giant Chevron. This positive development was triggered by the fact that there is a cross-the-board agreement to advance dialogue as a solution to the Venezuelan problem. The Trinidad and Tobago position, the CARICOM position, resolutely advanced to the Secretary General of the United Nations at his office in New York in January 2019 by the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, accompanied by the Prime Minister of Barbados, sent there by unanimous CARICOM caucus consent. Even in the face of all of this, neither Trinidad and Tobago nor CARICOM could have counted on the UNC support. They, as usual, have some contrary position, inimical to the public and regional interests. However, a Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago had no difficulty being guided by the fundamental teachings of Dr. Eric Williams and Errol Barrow, national hero and former Prime Minister of Barbados. And in the end, we will be vindicated at home and abroad. The question is, who does the UNC rely on? And what underpins their disgraceful behavior? It is not only in the economy, energy, and foreign affairs that progress is being made. Good things are happening in education. We have increased the number of students benefiting from free tuition and upkeep for tertiary students from 400 to 600 per year. We are focusing the government's investment on the most vulnerable. We have provided 500 national bursaries introduced in 2021 for students who start the CAPE exam. Awards are being made on merit as well as on the application of a means test. What that means is that no deserving child would be left behind. That is PNM policy. We have introduced more equity into the award of national scholarships. We capped the annual national scholarship award to Cape students at 10 in each of the 10 continent groups. We facilitated the recognition of and support high achievers in all areas of study thereby reducing the dominance of any one subject area. We increase the range and skill set of government scholars, available, government scholars available for national service upon completion of their studies. We are also currently seeking out, finding, and putting to work in the public service and in state enterprises those of our national scholars who have done extremely well abroad and are now available to take up important positions across the nation's production systems. COVID hit our children hard. It damaged the education system as well. But we have been able to transition from home-based learning back to face-to-face -face school during the COVID-19 pandemic. And most students were able to transition seamlessly on a phased basis, back to the physical classroom from home-based learning. This affords them the best chance of educational success. We are in the process of installing Wi-Fi in 476 primary schools, a program which began and is being pursued in fiscal 2022 into 2023. We are pursuing digitization of all student records, including the use of digital attendance register, creating the opportunity 
for more effective monitoring of students and schools by use of data analytics, which can readily supply information and trends for policy development. This same digitization and trends for, will happen for all teachers and their records too for more effective and efficient human resource management. That is part of the modernization of the school system. We are currently taking steps to procure an e-book platform to facilitate tools away from the exclusive use of physical textbooks to the provision of online educational resources for the greater engagement of students. Ladies and gentlemen, party members, citizens, there have always been an issue of a shortage of acceptable and affordable housing in this country, especially for the middle and lower income earners. In order to address this problem, the National Housing Authority was created to allow the government to assist low income persons to improve their living conditions. This took the form of the construction of rental units in the urban areas and low-income bungalows all over the country, from Charlottesville to Carnage and all the way to Point Fortin. Over time, the success of this approach and the improvement in the quality of what was being offered saw more and more persons turning to the NHA to meet their housing needs. In an effort to, to in an effort to further assist the population, the NHA was transformed into the Housing Development Corporation and a renewed emphasis was placed on home ownership. As the quality of the new units improved, there was a huge demand for HDC units. And in an attempt to satisfy this demand, the HDC lost its way, lost its primary focus as it directed nearly all its efforts and resources to producing only units for sale by mortgage. The effect of this was threefold. Firstly, little or no rental units became available for those who could only qualify for an affordable rental unit. Secondly, persons with restricted income were forced or encouraged to enter mortgage arrangements that they could hardly afford. Thirdly, the HDC virtually became housing provider for all those at the lowest income, the core group for which the agency was specially created, and to assist. The end result is that hardly any housing for lower income people is being built by the private sector. In order to rectify the situation, the HDC is being restructured into a holding company with subsidiaries. So first you have the holding comp company, the HDC. Then there'll be a subsidiary entity to be responsible for a landlord managing and servicing the entire portfolio of rental units, as well as managing the completed mortgage portfolio. Then there'll be a subsidiary legal unit that manages the complexities of new mortgage transactions to allow HDC to quickly recover its capital outlay which was expended to create the new units for sale. And fourthly, a construction subsidiary that will deal with everything from site identification, statutory approvals, and all aspects of project management for construction of new units. There is to be renewed emphasis on the building of affordable rental units and on units to meet the needs of lower income mortgages. A provision of $1 billion has been made by the government in the national budget to facilitate this transformation and policy shift. In addition to this, the Ministry of Housing through the Land Settlement Agency and other programs will have an additional $1.5 billion available to support low-income housing solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, Notwithstanding the financial and other difficult challenges which we face as a country, the one thing we have not done is reduce or eliminate the social support and other systems 
and actions which are geared to bring relief to those who are least able to look after themselves and depend on the state's caring to make life a little more bearable. In fact, we have increased that support. By far, the bulk of funds spent on the social assistance programs went to the elderly. Over the period 2015 to 2022, the Ministry of Social Development spent $30 billion of its total core grant, which is 75% of the $40 billion that was spent on senior citizens' pension alone. This assistance supports on a monthly basis 100,000 citizens. Overall, during the period 2015 to 2022, the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services spent billions on the core social grants, public assistance, disability grants for adults, grants for minors, food support, and other temporary assistance. To that, we can add flood relief, funeral grants, and even rental assistance. That is the breadth of the social support system in Trinidad and Tobago. Total expenditure on these grants increased from $3.97 billion in 2015 to $5.5 billion in 2022. This represents a 37.4% increase. The number of citizens who benefited from these grants in 2015 was just over 140,000 persons. But in 2022, that figure rose to supporting 174,000 people, an increase of 24.5%. Assistance to persons with disabilities amounted to $4.4 billion during the period 2015 to 2022 serving over 190,000 persons. Whereas in 2015, the ministry spent 379 million to benefit 25,000 persons with disabilities. The cost of that support rose to $636 billion, million in 2022. Over $1.6 billion was spent on food support between 2015 and 2022. Food support is provided to reduce the incidence of poverty among citizens by adding food insecurity via a cash transfer in the form of a card or check. In 2015, some 20,000 individuals and families benefited from $294 million in food support. In 2022, the number of beneficiaries increased to $31,500 at a cost of $93.4 million. Yet you will hear people in their idleness and in their attempt to mislead the population going on political forums talking about the government not caring for the people and the government doesn't care and everybody's suffering and nobody getting any help. That is their mantra. That is their narrative. I have just given you the facts. Every pensioner, anyone on public assistance or receiving a disability grant or food support will get $1,000 in a one-off payment in January 2023. This payment is to offset any anticipated rise in expenses due to increase in the fuel price subsidy, which was associated by the reduction that we took recently. So it means that once you are already identified as needing and being on the social support system, in so far as the reduction in the fuel subsidy will affect you, we give you $1,000 to cover your taxi fare. These are the undisputed facts. This payment, as it is made, is anticipated 
for the rising expenses, as I mentioned, but we also reduce your taxes to increase your spending power by leaving more money in your pocket. We said if you are earning a certain amount, up to $7,500 a month, you pay no tax. What that means, we have left the tax that you would have paid with you. That will benefit 300,000 persons who are employed at the lower end of the employment scale. But yet you have people telling the country the government doesn't care and the government is doing nothing to help people in their period of difficulty. So when you hear these facts, and when you hear politicians who distinguish themselves by taking from the poor, talking about who cares and who doesn't care for poor people who are under pressure, I want you to ask them to show you a record like this for when they had control of the treasury. Let them show us what they were doing when they had the treasury and how much they were caring for poor people. We know they cared for themselves and their contractor friends and all those who got wealthy. You never saw a program like this until the PNM came into office in 2015. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Public Utilities is working closely with WASA to improve the supply of water to the population by developing new sources in separate small communities as well as upgrading the infrastructure in the larger systems. In order to facilitate this, the government has sourced and is close to receiving conclusion of an 80 million US dollars to finance the reorganization and systems upgrade that are underway. Our farmers all over the nation have taken a beating in the last few days as excessive rainfall has caused floods, ponding, landslides, and severe damage to many roads and bridges. The government has set aside $10 million in assistance to cover some of the losses and to help them return to their fields for land preparation and replanting as necessary. For those of you who would have attended the recent agricultural exhibition and exposition right here in the Savannah or at Farmers Day in Tobago, you could not help but notice the enthusiasm, particularly demonstrated by the young practitioners who are stepping up to grow, to manufacture, and to market produce in this sector. The government is initiating and encouraging these people, mostly among young people, even as we continue to support the established, more experienced producers. Consideration is being given to improve funding for agriculture as we seek to implement the policy of making agricultural production a tax-free activity. As we encourage youth in agriculture, we have launched two innovative programs to facilitate and increase the pool of young entrepreneurs in agriculture, the Youth, agriculture, the youth Agricultural Homestead Program that was launched in May 2022 for 200 full-time students. A part-time component was, was launched last month. The Youth Agriculture Shade House Project was launched in October, and it caters for 100 young persons in shade house production and management. In this project, young farmers, male and female, are being trained to produce and market high-quality vegetables under controlled environments. The original shade houses to kickstart this program have been donated by the government of Guyana as a gift to the young people, young farmers in Trinidad and Tobago. We thank and congratulate the people of Guyana. A National Youth Development Agency of Trinidad and Tobago has been established as a single agency to efficiently manage the network of youth development training facilities, national service centers, transition homes, and the youth agriculture programs. We are putting strong and effective management in place to manage this youth initiative. 
residential youth development and apprentice centers, with capacity to offer skills training to our at-risk and vulnerable youths, are being opened up and refurbished. These, these are the old youth camps at Presto Presto, Chatham, El Dorado, Chagaramas, and Wallerfield. In short, youth camps are coming back. Non-residential youth development centers creating safe spaces for the holistic development of young people are to be opened up in centers in St. James, Malik, Laventil, Bazano Street, California, and Los Bajos. Ladies and gentlemen, I've spent some time detailing for you much of what we are doing that is positive in Trinidad and Tobago as the country responds to economic, health, educational, and other challenges. One would think that given the shape and size of these efforts, that the criminal profile of the nation would have been much better than what it is now known to be. This year, we already have a record number of murders, even as there's an overall decline in general criminal conduct. The murder rate is driven by the too easy availability of firearms, gang engagement, turf protection, and revenge killings. The police and other security agencies are permanently engaged in crime detection and suppression. But clearly, the current systems and methods are not sufficiently robust to bring the level of safety and security that the population demands and deserves. I have seen it said that this can be rectified by simply rotating ministers or politicizing the crime-fighting efforts. All this will do, as it has been doing, is to embolden the criminals who believe that the rest of the country does not have what it takes to bring the lawlessness under control. This PNM government is not prepared to give up the fight against the criminal element. And I want to repeat that. This PNM government is not prepared to give up the fight against the criminal element. We will continue to improve and to use the whole of government approach by resourcing the security agencies so they can perform more effectively. We would support the education system, community development, and sports programs to give young people at all ages the opportunity to engage in positive activities for self-improvement and career development. We will continue to grow the economy so that job opportunities will continue to become available and we will encourage and support families to steer their siblings and progeny away from a life of crime and away from the clutches of the recruiters to a life of crime. We will continue to invest in border protection and improve the quality of our policing agencies by weeding out corrupt and worthless officers from, the, from wherever they are in various departments. And we will continue to resource and encourage the judicial system with more court and technical infrastructure and more judicial officers so that they can be more effective in dispensing justice on time as we take steps to improve the conditions and use of our prisons and other corrective systems. Party members, ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens, at this time, you would have heard from Deputy Leader Ansel Dennis that Tobago is under new management. We as a central government, a PNM government, we have made sure that we give Tobago's development the best chance to succeed by cooperating fully with the THA administration, even as we provide effective opposition to those who may only be able to provide political confusion and dolly house behavior on important matters of state. In Trinidad, we have begun to implement elements of local government reform 
and we are committed to seeing the process through. We are confident that stronger local districts with access to local and state resources is the best approach to improving the physical and social quality of life in urban and rural districts. We have passed the legislation. Corporations will collect a property tax and have it available to each district for spending on the people in the very district in which the taxes were collected. Each individual property owner will make their small contribution, but the large number of small contributions would provide local government with an engine it has never had before. At this 50th Convention of the People's National Movement, we anticipate the next 50 years at a convention very much like this one. We'll be celebrating over one, our 100th convention, and at that convention, the halls will be filled with a sea of heroes in red, just like today. PNM members proudly red, standing in the halls of future, and with those same burning ambitions, answering the same call, because we are the PNM for all time. On this, our golden convention, I am moved to ask you, by acclamation, to consider the idea of the creation of a Council of Elders to be established at the General Council, such a body to provide further recognition for the contribution of our many stalwarts like Bonnie Padmore and others, while at the same time connect and educate our youth on aspect of our proud past as we build that confident future. Do you support the creation of a Council of Elders? We want to continue to leave this country better than we met it. That is what we do in the PNM, moving forward, moving upward. And we are doing so at present. And we'll do it in the future. And we'll do it with one voice, shouting so they can hear us all over this nation. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. And we shall prevail. Why? PNM people, put your hand in the air. Rocks in the air. Flags in the air. Anybody from the PNM say, why? 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 Hey! Raise your finger and Both are rough on it. Both are rough on it. From the PNM party. To make a big difference first, I'm gonna be jumping past the PNM. On both today, let them know how much you love Trinbago. Hey, anybody from the PNM? Is this the PNM people? Hey, say whoa, yo, whoa, yo, yo, whoa, yo. Yeah. You hearing me? Everybody's hearing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we good to go. Anybody right. here from the People's National Movement? If you're proud to be PNM, say I believe. Oh, na na na. Hey, 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 hey. Good evening. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We have just finished hearing an amazing presentation by the political leader. Uh, Dr. Rowley has gone through not only the last year, but the seven years of us in government, the challenges that we have faced as a nation, and of course, PNM steering us through those challenges. In the back room, we have Peter C. Lewis with one of our PNM anthems. Marvin, Short, y'all, we all sat through this. Y'all, y'all have been a part of this. Short, you've been through it. Seven years. Seven, years, seven years. Seven and a half years, fellas. Trinidad and Tobago, what you've just heard is a prime minister who is in control. A prime minister who understands utilities, communication, energy. He has just given Absolutely. us, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, a breakdown of his tenure. You've heard the good news. You've heard what is going on outside there. Importantly, from the complex issues such as energy, the billions and billions of dollars our negotiations have secured for us, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, down to, in January, the $1,000 towards fuel support for those 
who need the fuel support as we've liberalized a little bit the fuel subsidy. You've heard the breakdown of the hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars being spent on pensions. Marvin, tell us what we've heard about public utilities. Well, some you know, of these other things. the Prime Minister again reminded the country that we are committed to the transformation of the Water and Sewage Authority. As the yes. country will be aware that we delivered a transformation plan and the Board of Commissioners was delivered a transformation plan and was asked to move forward with the transformation of the Water and Sewage Authority. That is happening as we speak. But in addition to that, we recognize that the citizens of this country will only judge us based on whether or not they get water. And as a result, we have engaged the IDB. He reminded the country that we have engaged the IDB. This month, the board of the IDB will be signing that loan agreement in the sum of 80 million US dollars. We expect to sign that agreement in January. And by the first week in February, the country will now have access to the sum of 80 million dollars, which will be used to transform Wasa to rehabilitate all the plants that has fallen into disrepair over the years, changing over pipelines, automation, booster stations all over the country, increasing water supply, wells all over the country. And we expect that with the full utilization of that $80 million, every single community in Trinidad and Tobago will feel and experience in their water supply. And Messages of hope, eh? Well, yeah. Hope and looking forward Correct. to a brighter tomorrow. And Simon Marvin, what Prime Minister has done as well is told us about education. Education. Yeah. Decisions we took as a cabinet Correct. to support the Ministry of Education oh, to spread to spread what were formerly 400 scholarships. Now is a hundred national scholarships and five to six hundred bursaries a year to ensure that those who really need it get the assistance. And you know what I like about that bursary system? When it came up in cabinet, we recognized that it was a system that was more equitable. equitable. That is the word. Young boy in Laventil, right. in Belmont, correct. in Diego Martin, oh, correct. all over can now have That's access right. to a bursary system where they can go and have... And so many more education. disciplines are now benefiting from it yeah. as well. Correct. You have these non-traditional yeah. um, areas of study that are now benefiting from the bursary system. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. I want to tell you all from a communication standpoint it was very hard thing to hear the Prime Minister also speak about all the work that we are doing Correct. in the light of the misinformation that has been put out there and the, and the challenges the challenges that we face and how much worse it could have been if we had taken some of the bad advice that others in the population wanted to give us. What I found the Prime Minister did well Stuart and Simon he was able to cast the message of the last seven and a half years Correct. to what Dr. Eric Williams envisaged for this country Correct. In 1956, and you, you saw a continuation, that thread of continuity from 1956 to 2022. A PNM party committed to the development of Trinidad Bay. When I sat there as a young minister of government, a young MP, and I'm like asking myself, what would Trinidad and Tobago have been without a PNM? outside of the PNM? And I have to thank you, Stuart, because you have given given us utilizing your seven years of experience in government this you came in new like myself Correct. Yeah. and you gave us that guidance and we never felt as though we're in the wilderness alone right. and i want to thank you personally for that guidance you've all given to all marvin us. simon i appreciate you all coming in with your yeah. young vibrant energy marvin was making a point as worthwhile as finishing judge this government judge a pnm by the stanzas of pnm what is it we've delivered You've just heard a prime minister in sobriety come and deliver to the nation. Correct. Hey, seven and a half years of a PNM government where you, the people, have yes. elected us, elected these three yes. MPs as stewards of your country. What have we delivered? It's not old talk. You're seeing the results. What you've seen happen in energy has never happened. What you're seeing happen in utilities with the restructuring of WASA, that is a massive, massive exercise that we're taking on. Absolutely. What Simon is tasked with in communication, Ayana Webster-Roy, Gender and Ch Child Affairs. Shamfa is doing in sport, is fabulous. All of our colleagues, you have Minister Foster Cummings, a whole Fantastic. ministry, a youth, youth development, development and national service. You're seeing the plans it's come to fruition to roll out. You've never had that sort but of can emphasis. I, but can I also that. tell you all, eh? one of the things, Marvin, you talked about it, this institution, Sorry. Prime Minister spoke about why the PNM is great. One of the things that the PNM is 
that makes Venom as great as it is is our investment in youth. That's uh, correct. Sure, this talking about Minister Foster Cummings, but what I want to see, what you at home can't see right now, is the amount of young, young people, people who are amazing. here, amazing. who are supporting this party, who are carrying this party further. It is amazing. If you see the energy in the crowd, I'm sure you're seeing the flags behind, the bodies waving, everybody is energized about this party, Correct. hopeful for where we go with boundless speed in no, our destiny. destiny. I was just looking at my watch because it's now over 11 hours since we've opened the Queen's Park Savannah. And from the time we came here this morning to now, it has been thousands of people oh, throughout correct. the day. You've just had more and more. And as Simon has said, it is brilliant to see the young people come out. Yeah. You look at our young ministers, those who have come forward in 2020, some of us who were there from 2015, and you, the citizens, have given us the opportunity, and we have not disappointed you. Go listen to the old talk, the mama guy, the negativism that is designed to affect the national psyche. You are seeing the results. Stick with us. Continue to work with us. It's our Trinidad and Tobago. Well it is. And you know, I, I, you know, I listened to the Dr. Rowley again, and I sat there, and I remember the last seven years was so difficult for this government. And when we listened to the parliament, we listened to all the spokesperson. They never supported the government Not on once. anything no. that was positive for the government. They never advanced an idea yeah. that would have enhanced what we were doing. They never put forward any suggestion Correct. to enhance. And everything was just a fight on a undermining. This information is ridiculous. You know, and total. But you know what? We have persevered. The political leader has given us a narrative of perseverance pushing us through very, very difficult times, global issues, and very often, you know, we feel as if it is happening to us without understanding that what we are experiencing as a nation is a global trend. Uh, but this PNM government led by our energetic, enigmatic leader phenomenal who just delivered an amazing address amazing. to the party. We have been driving forward. Uh, I think he leads by example. Oh, we yeah, have no I choice sure. but to follow. I just want to end my part by saying what we've seen here today, the 50th convention of the People's National Movement, you will not see from any other party in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. What we've seen here today is quality, we've seen delivery, and we've seen people reporting not only to the party membership, but to you, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Absolutely correct. Thank you very much, Stuart. Sure. And um, for me, I just want to say on behalf of my constituency of Lopino Borneo West, who sent me into the parliament to represent them, that I continue to represent you with dignity, with honesty, and with sobriety. We represent a great party. We could not have achieved and guided this country over the last seven years had it not been for the vision of Dr. Eric Williams, of George Chambers, of Patrick Manning, and now Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley. And I want to tell you, that we look forward to your continued support, continued support for the PNM, because outside of the PNM will always be chaos and confusion. Absolutely correct, Marvin. Again, I agree with you all. Yeah. On behalf of the citizens of and constitu constituents of Digo Martin Central, we thank, we thank the political leader, we, we thank the executive. The guidance that we have gotten through this time has been amazing to see us persevere, to see us one foot in front of the other, not taking on all the negative that's outside and not taking on those who are intent on undermining. We heard the Prime Minister speak about what we are doing, very rightly said earlier, Stuart, what we are doing in energy, all the work that we have done and continue Correct. to do, to, not only to take us forward, but before that, we had to fix all the problems that we came, in, came in to find. Correct. What we are seeing is, is an amazing job by this political leader. Amazing. All right? So we want to thank you all. Please keep on, keep tuned in. We are, we are going to a commercial break now, and we will be back with you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Yes.
Traditionally, we would invite the members of the leadership to the stage, but we will do that from the second uh, awardee, and we ask you to stay here for our first awardee will be seated at the front. And can I ask those members of leadership who will be participating, our political leader, Dr. Keith Rowley, our party chairman, Honorable Colm Imbert, Lady Vice Chairman, Honorable Camille robinson Regis, Deputy Political Leader, Party and Election, Mrs. Jo Newell-Williams, Deputy Political Leader, Legislative, Honorable Fitzgerald Hines, Deputy Political Leader, Tobago, uh, Mr. Ansel Dennis, our Deputy Political Leader, Policy, Honorable Rohan Sinanon, and our General Secretary, Honorable Foster Cummings. These are the panel of members who will be presenting the awards. And our first, our first awardee, Ms. Amoy Mohammed, served as the last PLM MP for Princess Town and served as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Information at the start of the second Republican Parliament. She continues to lend support to the party by giving counsel to young candidates as recent as the 2020 general election, as she supported and guided Ms. Babulal during the election campaign. For your long, distinguished, and meritorious service to the PNM, we are pleased to bestow the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor to you, Ms. Amoy Mohammed. Let's put our hands together. And I now invite our members of leadership to please step forward. Mr. Williams will give you the award to present to Ms. Amoy Mohammed. Let's hear it for Ms. Amoy Mohammed. Welcome back to the PNM's 50th convention. Electrifying, amazing. Marvin Gonzalez, Ronald Huggins. We're here to just tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is democracy at work. This is us demonstrating 50 years of bringing our democracy to the country. So you know what you're getting. Guys, this is what's your us views? also demonstrating that at the PNM events, we all have a fantastic time as a family. We all had a great, exciting time. I mean, we just heard the feature address from Dr. Oh, Rowley. It was amazing. And it's special. That, that, that 50th convention address was very special. Again, taking us through the journey, bringing us to where we are, and telling us Inside where we're going. story, Marvin Gonzalez served in multiple capacities in public service. Came in as a minister in the PNM government, won his seat. And Marvin, you have an interesting perspective on a PNM convention. Because mm. as a public servant, you serve the people, but you could never participate in events like this. I'm Tell us what you felt. Yeah, yeah. Listen, when I walk into this convention stand, this Queen's Park Savannah stand this, this morning, I mean, it was so amazing. Mm. I saw maxis and buses coming from San Grande, coming from San Fernando, Tobago. You saw Tobago kids. Oh, wait, wait, this is your first convention? People. Yeah, oh, so, so, so folks, <laughs> little, little inside story, little inside story. In the public service, in the public service, you're not allowed to participate in political yeah, events. Correct, 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 correct. Correct. We have a frontline minister who, by the way, I'm exceptionally proud of. Somebody who gives his heart and soul out. But we're here telling you, this is what the PNM offers, and why is it relevant to all of us? Because we're on the exposure of democracy. Absolutely. What do you have to compare? You heard our political leader tonight talk about every area of national issue. All aspects. Be it crime and security, be it our energy sector, education. be it local government reform, education, education, public utilities. This is the PNM saying to Trinidad and Tobago, listen, we want to represent this country and continue to represent this country, but we want you to measure and test us. Mm. And that was what this convention brought home for me tonight. I tell you this, uh, you know, I sat there as a minister of government, as an MP, but also as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, and I felt so proud. 
because the Prime Minister drew parallels in the PNM in 1956 with yeah, Dr. Eric yeah, Williams yeah. always having a vision for the people of Trinidad and Tobago, for the development of Correct. Trinidad and Tobago education, very similar to what we are doing here right now. And it shows then that the PNM as an institution is anchored in its constitution, anchored in its founding principles mm. to serve and to enhance the people of Trinidad Correct. and Tobago. Correct. So put it in perspective, we saw speeches from Patrick Manning tonight, oh, yes. from Dr. Absolutely. Rowley tonight, yes. from Eric Williams tonight. I you may, you may be asking why more than an hour of the Prime Minister reflecting on his tenure as the political leader. Why? Because he opened the door to one man, one vote in a political leadership contest. We opened the doors to the nation to say, come and see the way we run democracy in our own party and why it is relevant to the country. And therefore, Dr. Rowley's speech tonight goes down on the records of the country so that 20, 30, 40 years later, 67 years later, 50 conventions later, we get to say this is what we stood for and this is what we volunteered for the country's benefit. And, you know, and, and everyone sitting here, everybody who journeyed from wherever they came from, mm -hmm. from this across Trinidad and Tobago, would have felt as though they are participating in a process that they can influence the outcome. Absolutely. It's no longer going to be confined to whether or not you are a delegate and whether or not you have the approval of a small group in your constituency. Right. You are coming here. So let's deal with the reality. Yeah. Why is the PNM relevant to the country? Because we have laid bare, via the Prime Minister's speech tonight, the state of our economy. Clico, Absolutely. the largest conglomerate to be dealt with, being returned to the company, the central bank stepping out of it. This is 2009 under a PNM government, 2022. So that there is a mission that affects every policyholder, that affects our GDP. Prime Minister spoke about the energy sector. The Prime Minister it's spoke about so many sector. issues that's, that's that are relevant to the country. Right. And what we are saying, good people of Trinidad and Tobago, is that we put ourselves on offer. We ask you to judge us by our performance. Absolutely. We're not going to hide the facts from you. Welcome, open doors to what the PNM is about. Welcome to our convention. Welcome to 50 years of being the <laughs> oldest political years. party. And the only political Trinidad party. Tobago. Correct. You know? And, 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 and Ronald, from your perspective, okay. coming in from the many hats that you have worn, mm -hmm. give, give our listenership, give the viewership a little reflection on what you thought the convention brought to the fore. Definitely, this 50th convention was special. Special in many ways. It's the first time we ever had a three-day voting process, yeah. which worked really well, by the way, and another first to the PNM. Yeah. You're talking about legacy this year. This here is our commemorative book. This here to the back is an article from 1956. Amazing. Amazing. 1956. That's the continuity. So the PNM has a very strong and powerful legacy, and we invite all persons, all citizens, into the PNM to be a part of a movement for Trinidad and Tobago. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have on deck? Prime Minister spoke about local government reform. Local government reform is the reality of what we want to focus upon. Correct. It's partnered with municipal um, development coming into public utilities, WASA, TN Tech, property tax. You heard the Prime Minister talk about property tax and how it's going to be located in the hands of citizens that run regional corporations. You heard the Prime Minister speak about our surplus budget. Absolutely. What does that mean? that there is money to be spent for the people of Trinidad and yeah, Tobago. When we are in a government surplus, we're talking about roads, infrastructure, disaster management. We're talking about employment. We're talking about opportunity for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And that's what we are about. Now, whether we like it or not, political parties run the country. And what we are attempting to do today in our convention is to open the doors to our democracy. This is what we stand for. Whether it was in a PNM anthem or song that we heard over the years, 50 years of PNM anthems, the point is we continuously stand up. You heard Ansel Dennis today. Wow. When people say it's 14 1, forget the PNM, no. <laughs> the PNM Tobago came out in their numbers, numbers today. Correct, correct. And that means that democracy continues to, to be alive. 
because it's about reflecting yes. on the lessons that we learn and re-engaging and re-engaging because so it's 50 years well actually 66 years 66 years it's and 67 it's actually, years away from 67. 1955 right Absolutely. 66 years away from the first election that's actually, that's right. 50 years of conventions and also 50 years 50 convention and 50 years in government so recap quick political leader votes are still being counted other officers votes are still being counted we'll have those votes come out a little bit later but there was open, the scrutinaires, yeah. three days of elections, ballot boxes, done a la general election style, local yes. government election style. That means our results will come out. This convention is about post a political leader, a four-year post, every other officer like me, for instance, in public relations, two-year post. It means we're back in 2024. In 2024, we're back on what are the other posts? Dr. Rowley, single-handedly champion the cause of one man, one vote. We did away with the delegate system. And if we're dealing with the delegate system away, it means that there's a greater and deeper democracy. So we have enjoyed the opportunity of sharing this event with you. We know that you've had a lot of temptation to watch football, to pick your best team. And that's the reason why I was shocked with this. Yeah, did oh, you know? 10, 000, over 10,000 10, people. 10,000 10, people I in the Savannah. I, I thought it was carnival. I right? can't believe it. I and can't super blue performance. And the oh, vibe oh, and oh, the oh, electricity. Those alumnos, they sound well. For oh, me, in other words, seeing the young kids. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I, did too, too. I, I often think yeah, children are not interested in politics. Not there what was, I saw there. There was a young man tonight that said, Uncle, will you come to my um, Christmas concert on the 9th? And if we oh. weren't in Parliament, oh. we'd definitely be there. But to see young, young people, young people interested in this. It was so energetic. Trinidad and Tobago. Did, did, you, did you remember the pledge when they were reciting? We yes, had, I we did. Had, I felt proud. To, <laughs> <laughs> I did. So, we had to join it with them. So we need to say our pledge. We're coming in to wrap up, folks. <laughs> Thank you for spending time with the People's National yes, Movement. indeed. We've been here for 67 years. We have had four political leaders. We have a live democracy. The savannah was filled with 10,000 people today. There was no trucking in of support. This was an organic event. Our best days are ahead of us. We have achieved a balanced budget. We have a surplus budget for the first time since 2008, 2009. Our best days are ahead of us. We ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to have a look inside what our political party looks like. Consider whether you wish us to be in your fold. What we pledge is to serve. We pledge an open line of sight into democracy. Thank you for joining the People's National Movement on our 50th convention. 67 years in the field. Welcome to democracy practice right. To my co-hosts and everybody else that were on the team today, big respect and thanks. Marvin, just to let you know, there were more San Fernando West people than your constituency. <laughs> so, San Fernando West, big, 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 up to San Fernando West. Big up to San Fernando West. Just let me know. Big up to San Jose. Big up to San Fernando We wouldn't mention, we wouldn't mention his constituency. It's all south. So, ladies and gentlemen, love from the PNM. Be safe. Best days ahead. We continue to invite all commentary on democracy, including criticisms. We'll get it done. God bless you all. God bless you. Live from the Savannah. Thanks for being with us today. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. <laughs> he is a long-standing member of the Operations Committee and currently serves as the coordinator of the Shagwanas West constituency. Mr. Hira, for your long, distinguished, and meritorious service to the PNM, we are pleased to bestow the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor upon you.
Roger Paris joined the PNM in 1968 and was elected to the first youth league of the San Fernando East constituency, where he remained a very good friend of its member of parliament, Mr. Patrick Manning. He has been a member of the constituency executive in various positions throughout the years and was instrumental in forming the constituency's oldest party groups, 15, 17, and 18, in the community of Pleasantville. For all his accomplishments, Mr. Paris boasts that one of his greatest achievements has been his dedication to the service of the people's national movement and the sacrifices he made for his children. For your long, distinguished, and meritorious service to the people's national movement, we are pleased to bestow the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor upon you, Mr. Roger Harris. Fiery, unrelenting, and dynamic, yet humble and compassionate, Alston Hodge is legendary in the constituency of Maruga Tableland and its previous incarnations. For years, he advocated for his people of Princess Town and Environs as a member of the party's general council, always willing to provide an heir and wise counsel. Alston Hodge personifies PNM passion. For your long, distinguished, and meritorious service to the PNM, we are pleased to bestow the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor upon you, Mr. Alston Hodge. of the Mova Laventil community. Congratulations, Mr. Hodge. Mary James is a lifelong resident of the Mova Laventil community. Born into a PNM family, she became a member of the PNM in 1989 and joined the same party group as her mother, which was chaired by deceased PNM stalwart Doreen Lynch. Mary later became secretary of the party group and went on to serve in numerous capacities at the constituency level and at the national level. To this PNM stalwart, we say thank you for your long, distinguished, and meritorious service to the movement. We are pleased to bestow upon you, Miss Mary James, the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor. We coming, we coming, we coming, we coming. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Henry Nicholas has served the party, constituency, and country for decades. As a youth, he served as the education officer of the National Youth League and as secretary of the Personnel Management Committee, the Labor Relations Committee, and the Education Committee. 
He was the chairman and vice chairman of the St. Anne's East constituency. And for 23 years, he faithfully served as a councillor on the San Juan Laventil Regional Corporation. For your long, distinguished and meritorious service to the PNM, we are pleased to bestow the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor upon you, Mr. Henry, Henry Nicholas. movement. She served for 16 years on the constituency executive of Port of Spain as the chairman of party group 4 for 30 years and as an election agent for two members of parliament and three councillors. She originally started in the Port of Spain South constituency and now functions in Port of Spain North, St. Anne's West and she continues to love serving all people. For your long, distinguished, and meritorious service to the People's National Movement, we are pleased to bestow upon you, Mrs. Patricia Crossley, the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor. Our final awardee for tonight is a Tobagonian by birth and a PNM by decided choice. Sigla Jack celebrated his 52nd anniversary, his 52nd anniversary as a member of this formidable organization. He has served as chairman and now PRO of the Digo Martin West constituency, and he is the current chairman of the party's membership screening committee and as the chairman of the Digo Martin Regional Corporation. For your long, distinguished and meritorious service to the PNM, we are pleased to bestow the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor upon you, Sir Mr. Sigler Jack. Congratulations to our 15 awardees, the recipients of the 2022 edition of the Dr. Eric Williams Medal of Honor. I wish to thank all members of our leadership and I ask our General Secretary and our political leader to remain on stage, please. Oh, they're all staying. Okay, no problem. So I now invite our General Secretary to present the Convention Credentials Report. Where's Mr. Daniel Duque? Can I ask the Assistant General Secretary? to come quickly with the report. And Mr. Dukey, 
Give Mr. Duki a round of applause as he comes. The Assistant General Secretary will deliver the credential report. Thank you very much, General Secretary. As the results as presented by the Registration Center, the credential reads as follows. General Council attendees, 175. Delegates, 962. Guests, 356. And observers, 12,963. A grand total of 14,456 attendees. Thank you very much. Thank you, Assistant General Secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm passing a trophy to the political leader, the political leader's trophy for the constituency that was able to mobilize the largest number of participants, registered participants at this convention. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to invite the coordinator and chairman of the Moruga Tableland constituency. Moruga Tableland. The Spola Gopi School. Mr. Gopi Schoon and the chairman of the constituency, come forward, please. Well, we've come to the end of a fantastic convention. I haven't heard those numbers before. Even at election time, over 14,000 attendees. And Maruga, big up Maruga. Oh, yes. Well, they're still counting votes. So the election results will be announced tomorrow. I wish you all a very safe journey home. I wish you all the best and great is the PNM and it shall prevail. Good night. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let's get some more.